Hi, this is Rainy here with a new video and this is a long one. So this is the thing that I do called Everything Explained. And this is basically where I have made a new account. I start playing the game as if I was a new player and I explain everything about the game. So we're going to explain the basics of Path of Exile. This is probably the most advanced episode that we've done so far. We have an other episode from six or seven months ago, which is still up to date, playing another build called Explosive Arrow. Um, that is even easier than this one. However, because Detonated is so incredibly strong this thing as a starter, and I know a lot of new players are going to want to play it, um, I wanted to do a full explanation and full everything explained for Detonate Dead. Now, these are really long. This is more something like Bob Ross, you can like watch along as you play style. So they're very long. I don't know how long this one will be. I have, after doing quite a few of these, realized that they're incredibly top heavy with 70 to 90% of the useful information being in the first three or four acts. So stopping past act five or six is not a bad idea, but we'll see how we go and how much more we have to explain. But um, we might go a little bit longer on this one um, if I have time. It's also leaks start coming up since we're a little bit tired. First, you will need to grow, uh, download a program called Path of Building, and then we'll have a link in the description to this build. You'll have to import it here, click import, and then you'll be able to see what I see here. And we're mostly going to be using this for the skill tree. And we do have a full build guide on this build as well, uh, which we can also link to. So this is made by iMaxal. Um, there. The convert thing doesn't really matter. And this is like set up so that um, you know what skill points to take at what time, because as you can see, the skill tree can be very large and very daunting. Now, once you register an account with Path of Exile and logged in, you will see this screen. And we are going to be a witch. Now, here you will have... Um, so, so these are the different characters of Path of Exile. And once you've clicked on the witch, that's the one we're going to be playing. And we'll focus on that. Um, you'll see that there are leagues here. Now, there will be a challenge league called Necropolis. This is what I recommend that you play. But... Right now we're going to play standard. Hardcore means that you lose your character when you die. Um, and at the end of a challenge league, everything is transferred to standard. So you can keep playing there if you want to. But you would never really want to start a new character on standard. Um, Scissor and DD Poggies. All right. I'll put on some in-game music. So we have some background stuff. All right. So again, this will be very top heavy early on. There will be so much to explain and so much to cover. And um, I will be following that path of building that you saw. So that will be on my other screen. And that's just so that I know what skill point to take at what point. Um, let's see. I'm going to go on D&D. Right. So this is your character. We'll explain a few things. Um... And some things will be under explained because there will be exceptions to a lot of the things I'm saying at the end game that is not important to mention early on. Um, but either way, so you see that we're a witch, we have some stats, and either way, we're just going to go ahead and click and pick up this Driftwood Wand. And similar if you played other games like Diablo or Last Epoch, etc. Very, very similar. Now we're going to be using the wand we picked up to attack, which is mouse button one. We've now found a Fireball Gem, and there's a lot of info on the gem here. We will cover a little bit more of this, but gems go in sockets. Now, this is on your weapon, but if I say say I had a boot, I could have Fireball in my boot. It does not need to be on your weapon. And a big tip that you can do early on that I recommend you do is instead of having default attack on mouse button one, you want to have Fireball uh, on mouse button, your right mouse button, and, and move only on mouse button one. I like to have my wisdom in the top left. The reason that you don't want to have default attack on mouse button one is because you will be auto attacking monsters with your one. And that's kind of annoying. Here we're going to get a support gem. So this fireball gem, this actually gives me a skill. As opposed to other games you might have played where the characters innately have skills like fireball or things like that. Everything is in gems here. If you don't have any gems, you don't have any skills. And uh, this is a support gem, so that alters how that works. 
There will later be other support gems, like we will have multiple projectiles, or we make them chain between monsters, or have higher area of effect, right? There's a lot of ways you can edit and change gems. And there are loads, hundreds of different active gems. Here we have Hillock, and early on, I wanted to show you how strong this is, because honestly, like, it's so strong. Literally running around anything, they, nothing in Path of Exile deals with us running very well. So that's the strongest thing I can teach you early on. You can see he really struggles to hit you. Now you've beaten 90% of the game and I'm not really exaggerating. It is running in circle game. Anyway, so now I get into the rhythm and this is how a lot of boss fights are gonna go. Because I, the reason I mentioned that is a lot of things I see new players do is they're not sure how to do movement. And it's literally in this game, if all you do is consistent circles, you will beat nearly every fight. Except the second boss actually has uh, AI targeting. But he's the only one. So, here we get a bunch of items. We are going to cover pretty much everything as we find it. That's why it's so top heavy. So. Here you can see that we have a blue unidentified item. Now, we're not going to bother identify that. As you can see, it's a limited resource. We only have three scrolls, so we don't want to use that here. Um, we can put on the robe. And we can put on the wand. You could also have two wands. Do you get a bit of a dual wielding bonus and things like that? And then you can see all like all of the text bubbles, everything like that can just be clicked away. That's just storyline stuff. And a cool thing about Path of Exile is for the most part, you do not need to go accept quests. So you can see here that Bestel has a quest for me. I can actually just go do that quest without talking to Bestel, which is great. I really love that. I wish more games had that. Um, there's like only two exceptions, I think. But now we're going to go ahead and sell these items. So from completely white items, we are just going to get... Uh, and we're actually going to just switch that out. I'd rather have two ones. Um, we're just going to get Wisdom Scrolls. However, from this unidentified corroded blade, we're going to get two transmutation shards. That's part of the crafting system in Path of Exile. And there is a lot of different orbs. If you look here at your stash, this is what it's going to look like. So you have four stash tabs. Path of Exile is a free-to-play game, but it is basically a buy-to-play game with an infinite trial. So to actually play the game, you will need to spend at least 20, but upwards of 40 to $60 to play the game. There is nothing in the game that like, past that, you're kind of wasting money or just spending money on cosmetics. But it is basically, I think most people would agree it's a $40 game. So that's important to know. Um, now we're going to talk to Tarkley and we're going to pick up Rolling Magma. This is going to be one of the skills that we're going to be using early on. Now, if you've already gone through and watched the build guide for Detonate Dead, some of these things are explained already. But you can see here in the skills window early on that we're going to be using Rolling Magma, Combustion, and Elemental Proliferation. So you can see all the things we're going to be using here. Um, we don't need the fireball gem anymore. We can keep that for later. But right now, there's not much we can do except go kill some monsters. And then control click will let you assign something instantaneously without getting the confirmation window. Oops, almost went back in. I'm going to move my mana fast to three. I usually have utility fast on four and five. And for the most part, I always play with a map overlay open in the middle of the screen. Now... In this first zone, it's very common to just run past everything. However, as a new player, you might not be comfortable with the um, with the pace of going that fast. So there's nothing wrong with killing everything and overleveling. It'll actually make you significantly stronger because the skill that we're currently using, Rolling Magma, gains a lot of damage by leveling up. So gems will actually level up. They go from level 1 up to level 20, being the max. Um, and... Um, the gem that we're using right now roughly gains 15% damage per level. So if I go very slow and I overlevel a lot, you're actually going to gain a little, a large amount of power. Uh, and we're now coming up on the waypoint. We're just going to grab that and continue running. But again, nothing wrong with killing all of these. I'm going to be playing at a little bit of a faster pace so that we don't have a 12 hour video. Uh, but feel free to pause if you need to catch up with where I am. Now we're just going to kill everything around us. Now, sometimes you might notice that things are like, you're moving towards things. So how do we fix that? Some games have that you hold shift down, 
But Path of Exile actually has that built into the skill system, and I'll show you that now after killing these monsters. And there are white, blue, and yellow, and like unique monsters, like brown monsters. Or orange. So we'll kill everything here, and you can see that we have some gems leveling up on the right. On the Arcane Surge gem, we're actually going to right click it. That stops it from leveling. And TLDR, it just it's harder to proc the support gem the higher level it is. So we just wanted to proc very often. That's why we're keeping it at low level. It'll appear here at the bottom if you want to change your mind later. And on the Rolling Magma, we're going to left click it, leveling it up. Now, if I click on Rolling Magma, I'll click Always Attack Without Moving. I'll be toggling that for every single thing except for something called Dash. That makes it go backwards. Other than that, in this zone, you will be killing quite a lot of things, especially all of those birds. They taste great and uh, they're very scary. This is unironically probably the, the relative most dangerous zone in the game because you have so little here. Like when you're in this zone, you have so little like power uh, and everything is very dangerous. So it's very frequent to see some of the best players in the game die here on the start because they're trying to rush through it. And that's mostly because of those rows charging you. Also, when you click that, it actually enrages the rows around it and makes them stronger. So if there are rows or these birds around, when you click it, they will become stronger. Clicking chests and stuff like that is fine. I wouldn't go like super out of your way to do it, but it's okay. And at the moment, we're looking for these like different sockets. So it's pretty straightforward. A red gem goes into a red socket, green gem goes into a green socket, etc. We're going to pick this up because there's a blue, blue, red, which if I remember right, we need a later. And you might have noticed at this point that there are links between sockets. So for example, if that link wasn't there, this arcane surge would not be supporting rolling magma, effectively doing nothing and just being wasted. All right, we got all the quests. Gear has armor, evasion, and energy shield. Energy shield is basically the same as life, but it like recovers differently. You can't recover it through flasks, and it recovers after a few seconds of not taking damage. Also, you saw that there was a unique monster there. Again, if you're a new player, there's nothing wrong with just going through and killing everything, but there's also no reason to do that. There's no quest or anything like that. Now we've gone through to the next zone. Now you might have noticed that there's another sidebound zone here called the Fetid Pool. You do not need to do that. I will guide you through everything that you need to do. Um, now we're going to go back to the waypoint here. And now you control, if you hold control while clicking this, it'll open an instance manager. So let's say that there were loads of monsters following me like there was now. I can make a new one and it'll be pretty uh, safe. Yeah, the guide for this is on YouTube. Now we're going to move to the Tidal Island. And this is where there's that boss that actually has some targeting. We're going to go through here and click. So we're grabbing spell damage. And this is upgrading the damage of our skill. So how do we figure things out like that for ourselves? Well, if you look at the rolling magma here, you can see at the top it has spell, AOE, fire, projectile, and chaining. And it is worth reading all of the gem. There is so much info. It tells you the mana cost, the base cast speed, effectiveness of added damage. So to quickly explain effectiveness of added damage, if I got one to three, let's just say, let's say that I got three flat added fire damage to spells, that would be almost nine, like 8.6 or something. I'm bad at math, but you get the idea. Let's say that I had effectiveness of added damage 100% or it just wasn't there. It would add exactly what it says. So some skills, We'll have like very fast cast speed and just be like very very quick at casting they will normally have low effective um uh low effective added damage so that you are not as rewarded for stacking flat damage we currently haven't found any right now we only have percentage spell damage we could also use percentage fire damage for a skill or elemental damage so there's quite a lot of different ways to scale this So at 100, 280 effectiveness, 100 would be 280. Yes, correct. Exactly that. Now, remember that I have not picked up the quest here for Bestel. We're just going to do it. 
I, I find that a, a really nice thing. Now, on this boss, just moving back and forth defeats him. This is the only boss you would have to do this for. So don't feel too bad if you die. He basically tries to target where he thinks you're going. How does he know? There, we picked up the green quest item. Um, and now you might be noticing that my things look slightly different than your things. So what I would recommend doing is going to a website called filterblade.xyz and then here under the options in game you can click, click click to open your folder it'll tell you where to put the filter file that you download and the never sync basic filter is really good i also post mine at xmh my filter in my chat but yeah having some sort of basic filter would be very useful now we've identified this it doesn't have anything really interesting that i care about what i was looking for here however i was looking for um we're gonna grab flame wall by the way as the skill gem even though we will later need detonate dead but we don't need to worry about that right now and we're picking up frostbite uh what i was looking for was something like high spell damage or the most important thing plus one level of fire spell skill gems and we can actually go look right now at nessa which now is giving us a uh quick silver flask as a reward that's what we're gonna grab and we can pick up the elemental proliferation support that we saw that we wanted earlier uh, I'm going to put on the helmet, and now we're going to focus on linking rolling, magma, and Ellie Prolif. We don't really care about the arcane surge right now. Actually, we can have arcane surge linked to frost blink. We can put flame wall anywhere. And obviously, you won't have the same links as me. Now, we're looking through the ones, and we're seeing if there's anything good here. If you see something like plus one fire spell skill gem level, that is very strong, and you absolutely want that. Now, we can look through for scepters as well. There are no scepters for sale. So we're just going to see if we can get any nice links. Um, I'm going to buy this because it has blue, blue, blue linked together. And we see in the guy that I want rolling magma with combustion and elemental proliferation. So this is going to be a great pickup for me later. Other than that, I'm going to vendor most of the things in my inventory. So vendoring things unidentified is actually really good. You can see that from the identified item, I'm now getting four alteration shards. They will later become an alteration orb. And from the unidentified items, I'm getting transmutation shards. So ID'd, alt, unID'd, trans. Yeah, you don't want to vendor currency. However, you can vendor things like blacksmith, whetstones, and armor scraps. And you could even vendor, if you have a boatload of portal scrolls, you can vendor some of your portal scrolls for more wisdoms. Now, I would say it is very nice to keep at least one whetstone and one armor scrap if you can. If you can't, like, that's fine. Just, like, focus on making sure you have enough wisdom scrolls. Let's see, we're going to take the spell damage there. Now we can go back to the waypoint. Right, so... I like to rebind in the options uh, Q to be spacebar, just so I have, I always have my movement abilities on spacebar in every game, and then a lot of other games have like, you know, roll and stuff like that, and I really like that. Now I want to show up some cool interactions here. So if this goes through, you might see that it changes a little bit, but whenever this goes through the firewall, it gains a large amount of extra damage. Oh, we're actually supposed to have holy flame totem as well, I forgot about that. Let me go buy that. So I think that's just one wisdom. Holy flame totem. So if you play Diablo 2, this is similar to Hydra, where it'll basically put down a totem and that will attack for you. And then you can see that I put always attack moving on everything. And even the movement ability does a decent amount of damage here. So we can just like rotate through the different abilities here as we feel like it. Now, what the Quicksilver does is it gives us a big burst of speed. We're going to go through to the Flooded Depths here. I'm like arranging my inventory to have a portal here and a Wisdom here. Just a good habit. And you see that the Totem is like killing everything for us. Now, getting stuck in monsters can be really scary. It's actually an easy way to die, and that's why we want to make sure that we have that movement ability. Very easy to die. We got an Orb of Augmentation. So, you've seen that I had a magic item. I can't remember what I had. Well, right now we don't have a magic item. I'll explain that when I use it. Well, 
I'll explain that when I use it. Whoops. We have wisdoms. And then we just gotta try to find where the side boss is here. And just by following along in this video, I'll teach you like, oh, I got frozen. That's scary. There are flasks you can get that'll make you immune to being frozen. Uh, just by following this video, you'll see exactly how to like quickly go through the campaign and ignoring any optional side quests that you really don't need because it's not worth your time. Now, if I put this, like the firewall, in front of Holy Flame Totem, Holy Flame Totem as well, while going through that firewall, will get more damage. Right. I'm going to pick up the boots and we're hoping here for uh, movement speed. We didn't get that, but we did get some lightning resistances. So, Path of Exile has fire, cold, and lightning res, and these are your elemental resistances in the game. And you will need to have, later on, 75 of all of these, and that's very important. And we'll actually lose some resist while going through the campaign. As you can see here, I'm trying to like move in circles. Try to not get hit by everything. You can just like blink on top of the boss a little bit here and there too for extra damage. We don't yet have like crazy damage. We have slain the boss. Generally, always pick up everything. You can use the portal here, but you'll notice most people will do exit to character selection screen. At leak start, if you do exit, like the other exit button, that will actually put you in the queue again. So don't do that. The queue is normally gone very quickly though. We are going to sell these unidentified. There's no stat we care on there. Um, we're going to sell all of this. So this is a rare chest, but we don't... Okay, I guess we can ID it. Could have some resist that we care about. That's fine. We have a new chest now. We're going to put this in here. Because we do want to get a combustion at some point soon. And now we don't care about this. So now we have Frostbling with Arcane Surge. We have Flame Wall. We have Ellie Prolif and Rolling Magma. Does Slash Exit put you in the queue? Yes, I believe so. Just checking the vendor again. The vendor reset um, is a little bit different now. It does not fully reset every time you level. Uh, if you talk to Tarkley, he will give you a book of skill. We can put on the mana flask here. And then, yeah. Now we get this is a notable. So let's talk a little bit about the skill tree. You can see that it is very large. That is why I recommend following a build guide, particularly because Path of Exile does not have a good respec system. So if you play for 10 to 15 hours yourself and what you made sucks, you don't have a good way of fixing that. And most people are just going to tell you to make a new character. So let's talk a little bit about the skill tree. These small ones, these are called traveling nodes. They will usually have effects such as strength, dexterity, or intelligence, or something small like spell damage, cast speed, etc. They're traveling nodes. Then we have the bigger ones here. These are notables. Um, they are more interesting and they'll have different things on them, generally like a bunch of damage, etc. And in a lot of these side wheels, once you've taken the notable, you can allocate an additional point, which will give you a mastery. So this is to give you a lot of different flexibility. So for example, a lot of the elemental things will have like all, all elemental masteries will be the same. So whether I have Ash, Frost and Storm or Divine Judgment, I can choose from the same mastery pool or same with like life nodes. Um, on top of that, you have jewel slots. This is basically craft your own little part of the um, skill tree with these being an even larger part of that. And then these are very build changing things called keystones. So you can see that this is like, they, they fundamentally change how something works. Life regeneration is applied to energy shield instead, or you can't deal damage with skills yourself, but you get one additional totem. Now we're going to put on a coral ring. It's just nice to have early on because we don't want to die. We're going to move to Submerged Passage, but since we've cleared some of the monsters in the start, we're going to make a new version of Submerged Passage just so that there's more monsters in the start for us to kill, giving us more XP. We're just going to go through that. Now, we just found a item that was highlighted by our filter. If you don't have a filter, this would not be highlighted, I believe. Um, 
But the way this works is it's a chrome item. So you might have seen that the sockets were red, green, and blue, and all linked together. What that means is if I sell this to the vendor, it'll actually sell for a chromatic orb. And that lets me change the sockets of other items. Now, for changing the sockets of items, this is actually affected by the stat on the item. So, for example, if a item has like a strength requirement, it is more likely to have red sockets. It's pretty straightforward. Dex for green sockets and intelligence for blue sockets. It's also affected by how much, so there will be a difference if it has 20 intelligence or 250. Like 250 will barely ever roll any other color than blue. We're just picking up a lot of blue items here. So that'll give us some crafting currency early on. Here we have another chrome item and um, dropped a support gem there that we don't need. Now, there we got a portal scroll, and you will pick up like a large portion of things you find early on. Especially just like building your early economy is really nice. And we keep leveling up gems. We're going to swap out for a medium life flask. You ideally at this point want to have found a large one, but there's some RNG, so you won't always find one early on. Ooh, I'm being attacked. The game does not pause while you're on the menu, so you can absolutely die. And if you go AFK in a zone, monsters will actually track you down and find you. Now, early on, going for practical application and heart and soul is really good. This will give us a bunch of life. Practical application will give us dexterity and strength, which is going to be really good. As you might have noticed, some items will have a stat requirement to wear them. Every wisdom you find early on, you should pick up. And putting out a totem here and there, you can only have one at this point, um, is quite good, just so that it does some damage while you're running. And then you help it out with more damage. We're going to be picking up every boot. Um, we're really looking for movement speed here. That'll also give you more time to dodge, etc. Now, we did find Orb of Augmentation earlier, and what that does is that, well, blue items have the potential for having two affixes. So we can have one prefix and one suffix. So we can see this is wrapped in boots of the Whelpling, Whelpling being the 10 fire resist. If I augment this, there's a chance that I get movement speed. I did, however, not get that, so I don't really care about switching to them. We're literally just looking for movement speed. Later on, you'll find rare items. They have three prefixes and three suffixes. And then unique items are just a little bit different. They have more like custom stats made for that unique item. There are no set items per se in Path of Exile. Always make sure that you click waypoints. They do not get automatically taken when you get close to them. Now, this is going to be a little bit more of a complicated build. Um, that's why I did mention about the explosive arrow thing, and that's because this uh, build at the end game uses two skills. So we'll be using detonate dead and desecrate. So we'll basically be creating corpses and then exploding them on monsters. You will also be noticing a large amount of streamers be playing this build at least start. That's because it is pretty much the most powerful starter, especially for hardcore. Here you see a boss, the false god Kuduku. Now, it's not bad to kill things like this because uniques, they do have a big bonus to what they drop compared to normal monsters. I dropped an orb of transmutation here that will make a, um, a white item blue. You can give it either one or two affixes. All right, here we have a mechanic called Essence. So this is basically an encounter that is optional to fight, but you very often do want to fight it. So you can see if I click three times on this, it starts to fight and opens it. And this will give me a crafting resource called a Whispering Essence of Woe. Now we haven't encountered an alchemy yet, which makes an item yellow. This also makes an item yellow, but what's special about Essences 
is that they will actually guarantee a set on an item. So if I hover over the essence in my item, uh, in my inventory now, it'll say that it'll guarantee the 10 to 19 spell damage. So we're gonna throw that here, throw it on our wand, and I got 12 spell damage. And we got one to five lightning damage. This is great, right? Surely this will increase our damage. Now, sadly, because of the wording, it would need to say two spells to actually affect the build we're playing right now. And when it doesn't say anything on a weapon right that, would actually mean that it's two attacks. So it would affect our auto attack, um, or if we use a one to attack, but it will actually not attack our spell or work with our spell. So Path of Exile is very um, particular with the different definitions and stuff. And that's something you have to get used to. Another example of this is in Path of Exile, if there says, for example, 10% more damage or 10% increased damage, these are wildly different things, with more being multiplicative with itself and increase being additive by itself. This generally means that more is always better, and a lot of people refer to this as Path of Multipliers, as that is generally the name of the game, is stack as many multipliers as possible. Now you might have noticed as well the rolling magma has an interesting interaction with if you cast it near your feet it'll like drop near your feet and start like cascading shorter or like more bouncy whereas if i do it far away it'll like it has a different acceleration we're gonna have practical application now and then we're gonna go up and grab firewalker for the damage don't care that much about the life right now Following a guide is not really a good approach. It's better to try solo first at all. No, that is terrible advice for a new player. And I've had such large feedback from new players that have quit because of advice like that. So some people are happy to spend 10 to 20 hours and then being told you have to start over completely. But a lot of people get pretty peeved off at that because Path of Exile does not have good respec options early. So starting out and, and trying out on your own early on is really bad. Do not do that. Unless you're unless you're happy with wasting 20 hours and starting over again. That is basically the if you're happy to do that. I'm picking up a coral amulet here, but more importantly the jade amulet. We might need a lot of dexterity on this build. Um let's see. Let me just identify that. So we're just looking to see if this had plus one gem levels. It didn't, so we don't care about it. We're not gonna just like walk through here. We can put down totem. See there's a lot of monsters. Now if I blink through these, I'll actually activate their defense and it'll explode on me. But we can just run through this. There's no reason to really kill it. It's not part of a quest. We'll just run into the lower prison. All right, here we're going to go to the waypoint and we're going to go back to town. We're going to vendor and feel free to go back and vendor a lot. You will go back too much early, but it's not really a big deal. We can identify this. Um, since this has dexterity, we might be okay to just keep that on, but you will most likely need some dexterity on gear. I'm going to keep the Jade Amulet in my inventory in case that I uh, will use that. <clears throat> right um now we get combustion i'm going to grab that put that in here so we have ellie prolif rolling magma and combustion combustion adds something called ignite to our skill and because we have the elemental proliferation gem the way this works if i now click and see that i don't have much chance to ignite here but that's because we're looking at default attack and this distinction will help you a lot clicking rolling magma will give the skills um explanation here we can see that we have a 45 percent chance to ignite that will do like a damage over time fire damage debuff on the monster and because of elemental proliferation this will make like a little glowy thing around the monster spreading that damage out to anything that goes near it even after it's died now we're going to vendor the majority of things in my inventory we don't care about most of this and at the moment we want transmutes so we do have three transmutes at the moment um See, oh yeah, we didn't need to talk to Tarkley here. It was just Ness that we needed to talk to. We're now going to go back to the waypoint. And now if we go up here, there's a pretty big chance we'll find something called a trial. Or we will find the progression to the next zone. There's a strong box. They can be quite scary because they can freeze you. Now you see that like big glowy thing? That is um, like the, the fire damage being proliferated, spread out between other monsters. Now we did find a superior gem there, 
and that is quality on the gem. Gems can have between 1 and 20 quality. And if I hold Alt on the gem, you can see that what it does on this gem is it's increased damage with bleeding. If I look at my rolling magma, it would chain an additional two times. So basically bounce more. Um, here we're going to pick up another one of those essences. You always want to pick those up. Now, um, an interesting thing to explain here. If I hold Alt on an item, I will see something called item level. This is item level 1, which means that it's basically a starter item and we're uninterested in using the essence on that. So next time we're in town, we're actually going to buy a new wand base and use the woe on that. And the reason for that is because at item level 2, you can get the um, plus fire spell skill gem level, which is a huge damage boost for us. Roughly 15% more damage. We're going to identify the boots. We're just hoping for movement speed at this point, and we're going to run through this trap system. So this is basically a little tutorial course for ascending in Path of Exile. Um, some games have similar things with like multi-classing and stuff like that. You have to do this fun little labyrinth with some like things that you have to avoid being hit by, and um, that will give you a large amount of power. Now, the labyrinth is something called medium core. So if you die in the last part of the labyrinth, you will have to start over. So you can't just brute force your way through this. Fun? Yeah, everybody loves the labyrinth. Right. Now we finally got a large life loss. We're going to pick that up and we're just going to throw the small life loss on the ground. However, if we had found multiple small life loss, you can actually sell three life loss for a medium life loss. So, kind of interesting. Path of Exile has a vendor system that's pretty robust. We found a rare wand. It has nothing good on it. So, we are just going to vendor that for alteration shards. We're also now going to grab a fire walker that gives us fire resist, cast speed with fire skills, and fire damage. Now, an interesting thing about the build, and this is why I mentioned it's a little bit more complicated than some of the other builds like Explosive Arrow, is that with... Um, the ignite thing that's happening spell damage does not increase the damage of ignites but fire and elemental damage does so for what we're doing that is stronger basically and we're we would prefer elemental damage or fire damage than spell damage but other than that like for the impact like the hit of our skill it'll do exactly the same now we did find a another essence of woe and we've found another goat wand I'm going to use the Essence of Woe now. We get Attack Speed, which does nothing for me. We get Lightning Damage to Spells, and we get Spell Damage. And we're going to switch in my Frost Blink and Arcane Surge here. And we did pick up a three blue boot. They are linked together. And early on, you are mostly, uh, with the exception of weapons, looking more at the sockets and, and like, uh, like the links there, more than you're looking for whether the item is really good. Is Inquisitor weaker than Necromancer for DD? They're both strong. They're both very strong. Different play styles. The cast on crit one on Inquisitor is even more advanced. That's why I didn't want to do a video for this. This is going to be the most advanced everything explained I've ever done. But hopefully if I explain it carefully enough, it should be easy to understand. And we'll take feedback from new players in the comments on whether it helped them or not. You see that I do make great care to pick up every Wisdom Scroll at this point because we will be identifying a lot of items and early on I will be needing to like vendor transmutes. I'll be vendoring other things to get more Wisdoms. And you notice now you're actually starting to quite get a decent amount of damage already. We're at level 11. You might be something like level 13 or something at this point. Um, like don't feel bad about over leveling. That is a very good thing in this game. Now, we're going to quickly grab the life next. So we get some more life and some more mana. I don't care about that ring. And now we're coming up to our first boss. Now, an interesting thing that I want to teach people early is... Uh, I, I'd say a lot of veteran players don't know this early. Path of Exile bosses gain their abilities as they progress through their health bar. So now he is going to have very, very limited skills if I just run around him. He is mostly just going to auto attack. And that's because they gain different skills that they have at different HP thresholds. So, again, you can see that he's pretty easy while you're just running around him in a circle. And this is basically all I'm going to do. That skill does a big AoE slam. 
That pulls you in. This is a targeted AoE slam, and that will one-shot you. This one will two-shot you. But you see how easy you can just run around him in a circle. Try to keep your totem down. We'll pick up the boots again. Make sure we have a full inventory. Now, something that's interesting. A lot of players, by default, you would just run through this. However, we actually already have the waypoint for the next zone, so we don't need to manually run through it. You can portal out here or exit to character selection screen. We're now going to pick up this leather belt. We're going to equip that, even though it didn't have anything super good for us except strength and life. Um, we're going to look at boots. These are insane. These are some of the best boots I've seen for leveling. They have life, double resistances, and movement speed. We are set for 20 levels. So now we don't care about identifying blue boots anymore. We're going to... We will identify the silken vest just in case it has like multiple resistances, which it does. And we're going to swap that out for our new one. Now, gear can seem very daunting in Path of Exile. How do you know what's good and how do you know what's bad? So early on, there's a few stats we're looking for. On weapon, fire spell skill level. That is not a local thing. Even if the skill gem is not in the weapon... Um, like you can see we have flame wall in the helmet that would be affected by that so that is all of your skills um if something only affects something that is socketed it'll tell you so it's pretty clear on that socketed sp um skill gems now other than that we want spell damage fire damage elemental damage cast speed and fire damage to spells cold and lightning damage to spells is helpful too but we do not scale that as much now I don't care about these boots anymore, so I can stash them for later in case I get really desperate for a three-link blue for whatever reason. Uh, other than that, we have some stuff in my inventory that we don't really care about. We killed Tarkley, and he offers us now a new skill gem. We are going to pick up Flame Dash, and this is a new movement ability that is slightly better. I like having both. They have a little bit of an interesting interaction. So Frost Blink is basically if you come from or go into monsters, it'll go faster. So if there's a bunch of monsters that you're going into or from, it'll have a faster cooldown recovery. Flame Dash has three charges. Another important thing to learn, while Frost Blink is always instant, it has no cast speed no matter what you do. Flame Dash, if I cast it back to back, might be hard to see, but you'll feel it yourself that the second cast will feel a lot slower. And you can see now that I have quite a lot of damage and things are starting to quickly die. This is a fire and ignite immune. This is one of the most annoying mob types. So you can see that the monsters, the rare ones, have loads of different stats that make them harder and more deadly. New video posted on Sis's channel. Enjoy. I don't even know what we posted. I've just been recorded like four videos yesterday. And as you can see, I am using my Frostblink still. Um, especially this early when Frostblink is doing this much damage. I actually quite enjoy using it like this. And yes, there are actually full builds around Frostblink. I believe Subtractum is doing a um build guide for that where your main skill for clearing is frost blink it's very fun now there are two unique here since they're so close together and we do have a lot of damage we might as well kill them see if we get any cool items early on because early you do really notice power identify that and we were quite lucky we got one of the best stats that you could possibly get on a life flask Sadly, it is just on a medium life flask, but it has the stat uh, instant recovery. And in Path of Exile, you very rarely are going to die slowly over time while going like, Oh no! I'm being slain! In roughly 8.6 seconds, I will be dead. It's mostly like, bum bum bum, you're dead. Now, we are not currently using scepters, but we are going to pick one up just in case it's crazy. Um, so if this had... Um, Crazy, like, fire damage level, or sorry, fire spell skill level, etc. We would probably consider switching to scepters. But you can't have one scepter and one wand. Let's see. We're now going to grab heart and soul. That gives us a bunch of life and also mana. You see that I'm starting to one-shot quite a lot of stuff now. 
Now there is a cave here that we're going to go in for a skill point. And then in this zone, we just have to go pick up a quest item. Now, neatly enough, you don't actually have to kill the thing guarding the quest item. You can just kill, or sorry, uh, run past her, pick up the quest item, and leave. That's kind of neat. Oh. Dead end. What's over there on the left? It's a tanky monster. We will pick up all rares at this point. Rares will sell for more stuff than blues do. Um, we're now going to start going up. So we're going to go for Elemental Overload. That'll be a huge damage boost early. Very large part of our damage. Here we're coming up on a Shrine. Shrine is a interesting thing where it buffs the monsters around it. With They can make it faster. It can throw out loads of ice things that deal damage to us. But if we click on the shrine, we get that buff and it helps us instead. So this one lasts 45 seconds. And then after that just dissipates. We now found our first unique item. So you can see that this is different than the items we've been finding so far. I'll identify that. It'll give um, some different stats. But we are going to put this on because of the life and fire resist. So that's quite nice. You will very likely not find uniques this early. Now... Any uniques that are really good, like this one is actually, because I'm saying that, I'm not going to use it. But I will generally be refraining from using anything particularly lucky in this. Because I, it doesn't really help people that are new. Because you aren't going to drop what I drop. Um, pick up that, pick up all the chromes. So we will just vendor that for some shards. Now you can kill this for loot, but we're just going to run past it. She froze me! Were the boots not lucky? Um, so the boots are a lot more realistic than different uniques. Like, a lot of people that are watching this will find uniques, but not that exact unique. Whereas finding some type of movement speed boots, that seems quite okay. That seems quite okay. Now you might have noticed that I am actually trying to pick up a lot of the crumbs early and that is because later on socket pressure could be really rough and we really want to make sure that we can continue having optimal colors in the, in, in the gear that we're using. And now um, we actually have to go back. Ideally you want to have found the ship graveyard waypoint so you can go back to that. I didn't find it so we're now have to walk back. What is socket pressure? So socket pressure is when you have more gems than you have places to fit them. Great question. We're going to pick up a Sapphire Ring and the Greater Mana Flask. Because obviously like, you can't fit everything and there are loads of useful things. We're going to put on the Sapphire Ring and see here that it's Cold Resist. And the game pretty quickly will balance for the fact that you will have um, 75 Resist. Now, if you are not a completely new player, you already have access to the Crafting Bench. I am going to wait with using the crafting bench until somebody that is completely new will have access to it. But as long as you're level 12, you can use your crafting bench and already now on your white items, craft cold resist for the upcoming Mirail fight. However, you don't on a new account have access to this until you're roughly level 20 to 24. So I'm going to wait with that for a more realistic experience. It's just a bit of a pet peeve of mine. I was always very tilted when watching RuneScape guides. And all the runescape guides are like, yeah, you don't, you can do this with bad gear, but I'm not going to show it with bad gear. And they're all using Balfa. And it tilts me. Because I didn't have good gear. Like, if it can be done easily and without it, then do it without it. It's a bow in runescape. Uh, I have 25,000 hours in the game. So... Now we talk to Fairgraves, and this is another skill point quest. We already had one from the crab, and there is 22 or 24 skill points, depending on the choices you make. Now you can see that our inventory is full, and we don't have room for everything here. We can do some, uh, do you know what? Uh, we're just gonna leave that one. I'm too lazy to go back for it. Too lazy to go back for it. We're going to sell all of these things. We're going to identify the gloves. No resists or anything interesting there. Now, it is a rare helmet and we don't have a particularly good one, but I care more about gem links at this point than I do about anything else. 
Now, I don't think we're taking anything here. No, we don't take anything here. Uh, we'll keep that for later. Now, what we can do is we can... Well, no, it's not really that important that we have a detonate dead at this point. We will need Vol Orbs, which is a little bit more advanced. It's okay. I'll explain that later. We're going to talk to Bestel, grab another skill point. You eat that. And we're going to continue moving up, and then we're going to go to the left here towards Elemental Overload. Do you keep looking for ones at this point? So I don't check the vendor that often anymore. Because, um, that one's okay, but mine are okay -er. Um, I don't check the vendor that much anymore, and the reason for that is that it doesn't fully reset every time I level up anymore. Sometimes I'll check it every three or four levels if my gear is awful, but yeah, very rarely do I bother. Just because it does take a lot of time. Now we're going to start running through a little bit more. Oh, I felt that that was going to freeze me. So that can be very scary, very easy way to die. This has good colors and it is a rare item. Seeing as your current one is white, I'm going to pick that up. You could argue it would be better to keep the Rusted Coif because you can craft fire, cold, or lightning resist on the Rusted Coif if you have access to the crafting bench. And the one we picked up right now has no open suffix, and all resists are a suffix. So, it was a bit of a bad item that we picked up, but at least we got that uh, 7.3 life regen. Which we now have 15, which honestly will be quite noticeable. So, it will heal me quite a lot. Any tips on hardcore for Stormbox Freeze early? Just identify everything. Getting, like, using, um... Transmutes on a life flask until you get a freeze is quite common early on. Um, but yeah, generally I would identify rare boxes. Or be ready to exit out of the game if you get frozen. Here's another one. That's tempting. That is tempting. Because it has so much resist, we are going to use that. And if you want to be good against my rail, getting 75 cold rest by wielding two sapphire rings would make it a lot easier to fight. New rare leather belt. Maybe this will be better than what we're wearing. It is not pretty much. Just have more regen. Regen is nice, but it doesn't really have anything of note. So I can run all the active I want to and talk to the NPC later. Yep, correct. You barely ever have to talk to the NPCs just to pick up your rewards, not to pick up your quests. Uh, can I get across here? I have made a big, big mistake. Backtracking it is. Open the box and then blink. Yeah, but I do want to refrain from like a little bit more advanced strategies because most people that are new to the game are already going to be overwhelmed. That's why I'm under explaining some things. I'm going to move towards that. Right. So it is the same with Marvel. She does gain her abilities after a while. And another reason why it actually isn't bad to wait a little bit with attacking. For the first three seconds after a boss has been activated, it actually has like 90% damage reduction. That's because GGD were a little bit tired that a lot of us speedrunners who were doing the campaign very quickly was um, too quickly killing the bosses. So like the boss would spawn and we would kill it in 0.5 seconds. So now it has like a little bit of a um, damage immunity phase to prevent being one-shotted. So you'll see now, if I'm attacking like this, you'll see in the first few seconds, it's taking barely any damage. New to me? There's so many things in Path of Exile at this point that even like a lot of veteran players don't know exactly every little detail that isn't super important. There are a bunch of rare items. We're going to pick up as much as we can. Can we make room for that with some inventory Tetris? We can.
All right, let's identify and see if we got any big upgrades. Now, we don't care about the helmet because it's just like one green and I don't really need that. At least this is blue and red, which is useful to me right now. We're going to pick up the topaz because we're going to replace my white coral ring. We can just drop that on the ground or you could sell it for a wisdom scroll. We're going to ID this in case it has 15 movement speed. However, because this is so much resist. Okay, I'm still going to do it just because I want to be faster. However, having a lot of resistances is very good early. Um, very good helmet. And this is easier to change colors on because it's evasion and energy shield. Um, I'm probably just going to keep mine. It's fine. Then we'll sell all of that for alteration charts. And don't feel bad if you're like going a lot slower. Just pause if you need to catch up or anything like that. I just want to like make the VOD as short as possible while explaining as much as possible. This rare monster has an aura and this is actually one of the most deadly things. So it's an extra physical damage. It's called sub fizz and it is a um, large amount of extra physical damage for all the monsters around it. So this is actually a very common thing to die to. All right, now we're going to sell everything to Groost. So we're just control clicking everything, getting rid of it all. Are we going to need the Jade? I don't know. We'll keep it. Stats are always a bit of a pain in the campaign. Is this I'm Excel's build? Yeah, we have a build collab with Excel on YouTube. It is extremely strong. Superior Elemental Proliferation. So this is very lucky. It would just increase the duration. I'm not going to use it. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. But getting quality for a gem you're actually using during the campaign pretty much never happens. And then I guess even in this case, it's not a gem that matters. I think it doesn't actually do anything. We're going to go into the den and this is where we'll get our second Quicksilver. Then we're going to drop down to one Mana Flask. So we can run even faster. We're picking up a lot of different things. Leveling up our gems, getting that big damage boost. Keeping the Quicksilver as much as we can. Okay, here's the exit over here. We're gonna kill the great white beast. Easy peasy. And then we exit here and continue. Will I start with DD? No. I'll be starting with something called Explosive Arrow, which I do have another everything explained for as well. It's just like every streamer is going to be playing DD. So even though I've played Explosive Arrow quite a lot, um, at least it'll be something different. But it's important to have a strong starter. There's nothing wrong with starting DD. All right, here we go. We're going to go to the waypoint. Now, at this point, we can go back to town and grab the Quicksilver, but I'm going to choose to do it after the next quest. Just so I like kind of minimize the amount of time spent in town. There is a three blue silken vest here. That's not bad. However, I'm probably going to not bother switching out of my stuff until we get a four link, which actually requires an item level of 25. So how does item level that I previously mentioned actually work? So you can see in the top right that this is monster level 15. That means that all the white monsters in the zone are going to drop item level 15. The magic monsters are going to drop item level 16. And the rare monsters or uh, brown or unique monsters will drop 17. So zero, one, or two levels higher than the zone you're in. All right, gonna go to the middle of the arena here. And this is a little bit of a neat trick and there haven't been a few of these so far. Um, but uh, when you see the waypoint in this direction, it's basically an arrow pointing you where you're supposed to go next. 
Whereas the other zones, like the other area, just has some extra magic monsters. Here we meet one of our first masters. This is Einar, and it's basically Pokemon. Um, you have to catch these beasts, and they can be used for crafting. The yellow ones are basically filler beasts, and they're kind of irrelevant. However, the red ones will often give you specific unique items, and some of these can be huge and completely game-changing early on. They also drop a lot more stuff. I'm gonna go over here because there's a trial in this zone. This it's down. Gotta net them all. Fun fact, Einar actually has a diss at Diablo 4, where one of his uh, lines, or sorry, just Blizzard in general, where one of the lines of Einar is, Do you not have nets, Exile? Quoting the popular thing that happened with, Do you not have phones? Pee-wee trivia thrown in. Now, there is one beast left. That means that the last one is a red beast. And uh, we'll hopefully find that before we leave the zone. Now, you might have noticed that I am killing blue monsters and actually caring about killing blue monsters. And that's because blue monsters give the same XP as three whites and a, a rare gives the same as five, roughly. So, they're worth killing. Rares can sometimes be really tanky. We're going to click on this trial. We do need six of them before we're allowed to multi-class, basically. Ascend. We're going to now pick up Elemental Overload. This is their first keystone, and the way this works is if my if I crit with my ability, my crits no longer deal damage. However, I will get a buff dealing 40% more damage. So this is a huge damage multiplier. And how do you know when it's proc'd? You'll see a diamond on your skill, so I'll try to point that out. But right now we're very low, um, very low crit chance. We have 5%. I hope I get the red beast. I might not. There's the red beast. We'll go grab him after. But yeah, so with elemental overload, you are basically not benefiting from your crit at all. Technically a crit would still like cause like a night shock and freeze. You just won't get the extra damage. Easy peasy. We're gonna pick up the shield just in case it's a plus one. Right, so this is not a very interesting Pokemon. Um, I believe this is like Jewelers or Fuses or Chromes. But this does not give a unique item. Whereas there is quite a lot of different ones. Like some of the Crabs give unique items. And they can be incredibly good early. Especially when you're in a level 20 zone. However, it can be worth killing. As you saw, it dropped a large amount of items. So we're gonna portal back to town. You can still just like log out if you want to. There and here we're going to pick up. Let's see, what does the build say that we're grabbing? We're grabbing Skitterbots and Herald of Ash. So we're going to grab that. Herald of Ash is a buff, and we'll look at that in a second. Um we'll identify the wand. Hmm. That is better. Not a lot better, but it is better. Hmm. I'm too lazy to switch, aren't I? Am I too lazy? That does have so much more flat, but no percentage. You know what? I'm too lazy to switch. It's a bit of a problem with the sockets and stuff. We are now going to switch in the life last there. Eh, it is so little. Even though it is instant, we're just going to get rid of it. So you do have to continuously upgrade your life less as you're going through the campaign. Um, let's see. We can go and buy Skitterbots now and pick up our Quicksilver Flask. We're going to get rid of... Let's see, we need to identify this. We can get rid of that. And just delete that. It doesn't really sell for anything. Uh, we can quickly look through and see if there's any ones in this shop, but there wasn't. Um... Let's see. However, we can now go buy Skitterbots. Now, am I going to use it? There's actually a reason not to. 
I'll explain that now. So, if I activate right now, you can see that I have skitter bots there. And I can put... Oh, I didn't put in my Herald of Ash. And I can have Herald of Ash. So I have both of these online. But now, you might notice that your mana might be a lot worse. So, if you're finding your mana is awful to deal with, you could, for example, deactivate the um, skitter bots. So if you have to choose one between those two, I would say Skitter Rots. Um, Herald of Ash is causing like nice explosions that help proliferate the damage a little bit. And it's giving us extra damage. Whereas Skitter Rots is giving more damage as well. It is shocking monsters, making them take more damage. And it is chilling monsters, making them move slower. So both of these are very good. Very good. So by getting these two now, we actually gained a large amount. So you can see 10% chill and 15% shock while hovering over them. And you can see that extra little explosion. Very nice. You wouldn't want to add clarity right now because it would further reduce your max mana. I never ever use clarity pretty much, very rarely. Unless you're an Archmage build. Also, for those watching the Twitch live stream, if anyone asks like a very generic question about some other stuff, I'd love it if you answer for me. I can focus on the everything I explained. We'll try to answer things directly related to this though, because that'll be useful to people watching on YouTube too. Here we see another essence, and this is the essence of anger. Now, this one's very angry, but it is extremely useful, especially for us, because if we see here on other jewelry, it'll give us fire damage. So I can now use that on the sapphire ring, after we start done with all the monsters. And this will now have guaranteed fire damage and all the other things are random. So we now gained 11% increased damage. We're not going to run up. We're going to run to another boss. Hold on, 30. All right, so we talked to him and now we're going to kill him. So the different choices here is basically there are three bandit lords and helping any of them um, will give a different buff. However, because of balance, none of them are particularly good right now. Um, none of them are particularly used, only sometimes Elira. Other than that, they're simply just skipped. But if you kill all of them, you do gain two skill points. We're going to identify the wand. Nothing interesting, so we're going to vendor everything. So as you might have noticed, we are vendoring the majority of the stuff. Right. Here you notice the Fire and Ignite resistant again. This means that we just do so little damage towards it. They're one of my least favorite things about the game. I don't like them very much. They're not very nice. So there's no counterplay. I just... You're not really encouraged to use multiple damage types in this game. Now, over these uh, bridges, you can't actually frostbite. It's a little bit too short. So... You actually want to... Flame dash at this point. Now, an interesting thing is... If I remove flame dash here... You can see that I can still flame dash. So how am I doing that? Well, Path of Exile actually has two bars. One is accessible by uh, holding down control, but, and this is a nice thing to learn early, you can rebind everything on that. So uh, you can see here that I've rebound the third skill in my second bar to mouse button five. So I don't need to hold control to use that. That being said, it's still nice to have flame dash on my second bar, even though I'm not pressing R to use it, just to keep track of cooldowns. But a lot of veteran players don't actually know that you can rebind the second bar and you don't have to hold control to use it. That's why I mentioned that early. Here we have a waypoint and now we're going to go uh, to the left. Now, a lot of the time I will go into this zone and kill Oak first. However, especially uh, with new players, you might have very low damage early on and Oak can actually be quite tanky. And you might find yourself screaming, he's healing, as you're trying to kill him. 
Right, we're now going to move up, as we can see in the guide. Um, there's some nodes here to the left and some nodes up here, but going through here gives us very potent life nodes. Now, here is an interesting little trick as well. When we find the waypoint, we know that um, one quest is on one side and another is on the other. So if I stay on this side now, I'm eventually going to find a road that is sort of like broken. And that's how I will know that it's the road to find um, Alira. So here I see that torch and I see this broken road. And that leads me exactly where I need to go. I'm going to kill Alira. However, it's not terrible to help Alira because instead of getting two skill points, you do get 15 all res. So as a new player, that's not bad. It's also not a permanent decision. You do have a later thing you can do in the end game where you can respect this. It's not super trivial, but it's not expensive either. Most of the time, I, I have, I mostly only kill them all because it's quite easy to res cap and we'll teach you how to do that at the end of this act. You see, we're pretty much one-shotting everything already. Pick up more rares. We always like filling our inventory there. Here is another side quest, and this is another skill point quest. There, and then we can log out here, and we are going to go back to Act 1, hand in the quest. We can vendor everything. Now, we will identify this in case it's crazy. It is not. We don't care about the that. We probably wouldn't use that no matter what. So we're vendoring all of these things. Generally, during leveling, you do use more transmutes early on. Then you use alterations, and we're going to need at least six or seven transmutes. I'm going to talk to Bestel. And again, this was not a quest we accepted at any point. We just have it. Now, we're going to take our first mastery point, 50 flat life, giving us 65 total additional life. Obviously, very nice, and we enjoy that. Um, there's nothing we need here. We're now going to go to the river ways. We can go to Oak. Oak. Same concept here with the broken road north of the waypoint. So, Rolling Magma should feel really good at this point. You might notice that if there's no monsters, I am using Flame Dash. And I'm using Frostbang if there are monsters. However, I'm getting to the point now where it's not exactly one-shotting, so... <laughs> right, we're gonna kill Oak. He can put down things beforehand. He is pretty tanky, and that's because he does something called Enduring Cry, which gives him Endurance Charges, a temporary buff that gives him Resist, Physical Reduction, and, more importantly, it heals him. He also does another buff called Immortal Call, giving him some Elemental Res and Physical Immunity. Picking up all rares as per normal. And we did see an essence slightly north of here. However, if we hadn't seen that essence, we'd be running straight west because that is where we have to go to progress. So how am I not running into any dead ends? And why am I running straight to the objective in every zone? So while zones in Path of Exile are random, that is not entirely true. There are only roughly between 30 and 40 layouts per zone. So after a few th thousand hours, you will have memorized all of those kind of like passively. And you have a pretty rough idea of where every single thing is by seeing the start of the layout. However, this is one of the least important things to learn, even for speedrunning. It'll sort of come naturally. So. Now we're going to go back to town and we're going to talk to Aramir and he will now give us two skill points. Sadly, we don't even get to eat these skill points. I'm going to identify that, sell that unID'd. And now you might be noticing that we're getting very low on wisdoms. I'm going to keep one blacksmith whetstone, shift click to um, split. And uh, now we have a bunch more wisdoms. All right, we're going to go back to the Western forest and we're going to move... Um, West. Vare here with an aura and a bunch of blues. Blues can have like damage mods and scary things too. Our rares are generally a bit scarier. We're gonna move to once you see like a sort of spider webbed forest, you know that you're in the right area. So it's a little bit southwest of us. And you see that you're in the right area here, and there'll be an entrance. 
let's see we are going to assign some more skill points we are moving towards even more damage we already have 600 life which is pretty good we pick up the replenishing shrine a few different layouts here this could still be a dead end actually it is either far left or top right Calling one, so this is four minions, but it still could have enough other stats that we would care about using it. Notably, like plus one fire spell skill gem levels. All right, he knew where to go. I knew. Now, Weaver is a little bit scary. Definitely a fight you want to stay mobile in. That's because of the little web ball she fires out and it actually does chaos damage and a decent amount of it. And that's not something we've really talked about before. And right now we do have zero chaos resist. And honestly, you will not have a lot of chaos resist during the campaign. Any chaos resist will make a big difference because generally the game considers that you will be uh, negative or zero chaos resist for quite a while. However, this has been changing where chaos resist has become more and more important even earlier in the game. I'm going to pick up everything there and then we are going to exit character selection. Um, we will check the scepter just in case it's cracked. But obviously, if we did get a good one, we would have to get a second scepter. Now, if you don't talk to Einar, he will actually still have a chance to appear at the start of the zone and uh, help you. So, don't talk to him. Now, we are going to grab Ellie Focus here. That's not something we're going to be using now, but we will be using that later. I'm going to move to the Wetlands. Now, we are going to the worst zone in Path of Exile. If you do end up full clearing this, don't feel bad. It is the worst zone, and I don't even always run the correct way here. Sometimes I do. But this zone is awful. If you get stuck, there is an exit, I swear. Although this is a good layout. Another thing that can switch uh, zone layouts a lot is something called Val side areas. Normally I wouldn't explain this, but you actually want to start running Val side areas as soon as you see them. And the reason for that is the reward at the end can actually be very good for this build as we do need a gem called Val Detonate Dead. If you do happen to find one, start leveling it as soon as you can. Oops, I want that. So we were pretty lucky with the layout being a very straightforward one where it just wraps around back on itself. But this zone can still be really complicated and hard to navigate. Did he take the last passive point from Lioness Watch? So that's a great thing to ask. Did we? Well, we can write slash passives and we know that we have done four different quests. So we have all of the quests so far. When you finish the campaign, doing slash passives will show all of them, including the missing ones. That's very good. Okay, we're going to start getting some damage here. And we are going for the outer wheel. Are there some gems that can only be found on drop? Yes, but none that are relevant to us at this point early. And in all filters, they will like, bing! Like, they'll, they'll stand out. Now we are getting to a very important zone for those of you that are playing for the absolute first time. I wonder if there's anyone watching in chat that actually haven't played PoE yet. That'd be fun. So I know a lot of people do that on YouTube. Maybe not on Twitch. So, in this zone, we are going to see the Dread Thicket. And in this zone, we are going to unlock our hideout. Are you doing the full campaign? Um, I usually do, but it is very top heavy, so it's not necessary. So I might stop earlier on this one. My last everything explained did do the full campaign, but everything like between six act and 10 is very, um, it is just not as important. Now we found a three blue gloves. We're going to pick that up. And now we're looking, I barely ever do this one. Actually, I have no idea on layouts here, but we are looking for a little side area, a little blue dot on the map. 
Then we're gonna go in that. And here is where we get our hideout. Now I am on a completely fresh account, so I actually have to do this. Is I made a new account just to fully simulate the new player experience. Clear the hideout. Okay, cool. So you just clear all the monsters until you get a little achievement pop up. Kill the two uniques. L68 oh, six. Nice dude, grats. Right. Hideout unlocked lush hideout. Very cool. We go back to Helena. Create hideout. Now this is our first hideout. Teleports us there. And we now get access to the crafting bench. Now, this is why we wanted so many transmutes. So if I now um now this one's full. So this one's actually more interesting to us. I'll look at my resistances and see, well, what do I need more of? Well, right now I need fire resist. So even though it doesn't have any stats on it right now, I can simply craft fire resist on this. My belt has an open suffix. So, and I see that by holding alt. So this shows that I have two prefixes, two suffixes. And like I previously mentioned, we have three rare uh, prefixes and three suffixes. So this is an open prefix or a suffix. The crafting bench only lets you do one. So I'm now going to craft cold resistance on this. Now I can see that I have 74 cold resist. The max is 75. So I don't need the one additional there. But uh, I'm pretty happy with this right now. I'm going to do additional fire resist on my ring. And then I need lightning on one more item. And I am good. Now these are all the crafts we have access to at this point. This is why I like doing a new account. Just so I'm exactly sure of what is actually available to me at this point. Now, now I'm 75, 74, 75 resist at level 23. We don't really have much resist on the skill tree. However, if we needed to, we could pick up Lightning Walker and Frost Walker for even more resist early on. We're going to go back to Northern Forest. We can make a new zone. And then we're going to go through it. Now, as a cool thing that just like to show some cool things that are available in Path of Exile, I could actually start this zone over and over again. Um, and maybe it's just at the start, but I think Einar should appear here eventually since I haven't talked to him. And he would, uh, if, if I see Einar, I know that there's beasts in the zone. So I could like, you know, try to farm a little bit early and farm a unique. This is super unnecessary. Just an idea of like, neat things that you can do. These are pretty scary. You see the purple orb floating around them. That means that they have this as extra chaos damage and their own bears, which obviously have a lot of physical damage to begin with so pretty easy to die to things like that how do you reset the zone so like we previously showed you hold control when entering the zone or when clicking the waypoint also if you see somebody in chat asking a question i've already answered feel free to answer it there's a lot of new players in chat as well not just on youtube All right, boom, even more fire damage. So all of these give 16% fire damage, except for the first one is 12. The last one give 30% fire damage. And the other stat there is penetrate 6% of fire resist. That means if a monster had 6% fire resist, it has zero. If it had 75, it has 68, 69, 69. Nice. Math hard. I'm not very smart. All right. Well, I wish I went through here. Hopefully you're already starting to feel pretty powerful and generally that's why we recommend build guides. Um, anything else I can explain while we're running? We do have the essence of woe that we can use for crafting something. Oh, calling one. So since that is a bad implicit, 
Um, we don't care about it, so what are implicits? So implicit in this case is the 1 to 3 fire damage to spells. Implicit in this case is the 22 lightning res, here are the 25 cold. And if we're rolling on the item using different currencies, that implicit does not change. And not every item has an implicit, so you see my glove has no implicit. Now, we don't care that much about rare boots anymore, at least for a bit. We'll be very interested once we start finding four links. Now, four links do require an item level of 25. It means that we cannot currently find them. Soon, though. Since we are so high level, the vendor could technically already sell us a four-linked item. So it could be worth checking for that. Now, this zone is 23, so that means that in this zone, any rares can now start dropping four links, and the boss at the end of the zone um, will also have a chance to drop um, a four link. Now, before fighting this boss, I would recommend loading up a movie or Lord of the Rings or something while you're waiting for the boss to spawn. Probably watch two of the Lord of the Rings movies. All right. Finish your PhD, have children, and then get back to me when you're done killing the boss. Calling one again. I'm only dropping minion implicit ones. Okay, you see like totems, and the totems have like an aura, they buff things around them. That one that I just killed had a basically immortality aura. So you can't kill anything around it until the totem is dead. Generally, the layout in this zone, you always go across from where you entered. You see, I just run to the opposite side of the room. Diagonally. One more tune. It does get shorter or like smaller and smaller the closer we get to the top because you are in a pyramid. Right, now you see that I switched out my mana flask and I have no charges in it. I could either go back to town to recuperate them or I can kill monsters um, around me. So I will probably just kill some monsters, get some flask charges. I'm sure there's monsters somewhere, surely. Ah, eh, hopefully that's enough. If not, we'll go back to town. Yeah, on this build you swap to detonate dead in maps. I might try to swap earlier just to show it. But you do want to swap pretty late. <sighs> right. Here there was a recipe that gave us a crafting recipe for a crafting bench. I think that was lightning damage. I can't remember. We're just putting down our abilities to kill the boss. It spawns adds, which will give us fast charges, which is nice. Not every boss will have adds. There's a few different abilities, like a slam, like that. Uh, that's very scary and will kill you. I will probably intentionally die sometime soon to show how that looks. Um, actually, now's as good as time as any. So I'm going to intentionally die right now and show you what happens because there's a very important mistake that you could do. So let's say you take the slam and boom, you're dead. If you're resurrecting town right now, you have to go back to the waypoint um, and rerun everything. Kind of annoying. Whereas if I resurrect a checkpoint right now, I spawn right outside the boss area. Now you might have noticed that my aura is turned off. 
Um, so you have to re-enable those. So make sure you click the resurrect at checkpoint. It's quite important. You'll have to rerun a lot of the stuff. So we have a four socket boot, not a four linked boot though. Another chrome. We will identify it in case it's cracked. It also takes a long time to up, like unlock the next area, but you can just go to town because we already have the portal or the waypoint for the next zone. I'm gonna vendor everything. There's nothing we have any interest in here. There's no quest reward or anything like that. We do now get the Heart of Flame. How do you not run out of charges for what, mana flasks and stuff like that? Well, as you can see, I'm not using it that much. Like, our spells don't cost that much mana. So I don't need to spam it. Does he have a plus one? No, I have quite bad gear right now. 12% spell damage with some flat. And 12% uh, spell them. So we do not have any good gear so far. Strong boxes are really interesting. And there can be loads of different types. There are some rarer ones that draw currency. And later on uh, other special things. We'll just pick up every rare. This is the only NPC that, well pretty much, that you need to talk to. Very important. If you don't talk to her, she will not be available in town. So think of that as completing a quest where you need to free her. my inventory a little bit. Grab a skill point and now we're going to pick up a mastery and um, now we're going to pick up a really big one. Critical strikes do not inherently ignite which we don't really care about ever because we have a chance to ignite. However, 100% increased damage with hits against ignited enemies. So that means if we're able to, with any of our fire abilities, get something ignited, we get 100% increased damage. Now, early on, um, increased damage is basically the same as more, like very, very early. So increased damage is more powerful the less you have of it, but it is additive with itself. But if you had like 30% increased or 30% more, there's no difference between it. So increased damage is still very strong, even though especially later, all you care about is as many more multipliers as you can get. And obviously you are starting to get more multipliers on your gems. And you get a lot of increased on your gear and your skill tree. This zone as well can be a little bit weird to read. Um, but you'll just eventually sort of like feel it. And you'll know where to go. You'll like have some sort of warning sign in the back of your head saying you're running the wrong way. But now we're on the right path. You see our movement ability does so much damage, it's actually killing things. Which is kind of cool. Like, ignites all the monsters, killing them. Well, it's actually just burning them, it's not actually igniting them. Unless our flame dash crits, which... It can't crit to ignite anymore because of the mastery we picked up. There's a lot of things like that too. Watch out for in PoE. I found very little orbs and stuff. Normally, I would have explained a lot more orbs. Um, this is a ghost that can possess rares and go inside them. And it goes to touch normal monsters, giving them some buffs and making them drop more loot. Oh, I also didn't explain alterations. What alterations does is it will re-roll a blue item, giving you new stats. So for example, on this Quicksilver, I can use an Augment, see if I got anything nice. If I didn't, I can use an Alteration and then an Augment again. Um, and now I've reduced Curse effect. So if I do get cursed by something, that curse won't hurt me as much, uh, depending on what it does. Speaking of curse, thank you so much, game. You are cursed. You take more fire damage and are more prone to being ignited. So the tooltip is actually technically lying to you. You do not take more fire damage. It simply lowers your fire resist. I wish they would update that. It's a bit of a pet peeve of mine. So it lies. If you have 90 fire res, it wouldn't do any more damage to you. What a liar. Now, here we found a giant life flask. Especially on hardcore, you'll see a lot of people will at this point start using transmutes on your flask and maybe a few alterations. And the goal here is either 
getting just a decent flask with like freeze immunity or bleed immunity or getting something like instant life recovery while low life low life is 50 percent less uh 50 life or less this is a monster that's touched by a ghost um but ideally we want what we had earlier which is just like fully instant without a condition this is another trial that's for that um ascendancy system Lift through all the levers. Levers? Point. And you can see that we have three. So we missed one in Act 2. It's not particularly important when you do that. That is a side quest. So that is not particularly important. And again, at this point, you might have gotten very lost. You might be like level 30 at this point. That is completely normal. You have no way as a new player to read zone layouts. And you're probably killing a lot more. You might have seen I'm running past some things. Another recipe. Enough of this. Done the portal. We're about to leave. Right. So we now have a chaos orb. It's kind of funny that we don't have an alchemy at this point. But what a chaos orb does is it will re-roll an item. That is rare. So if I use it on my chest, it will reroll between at least four. It is a minimum of giving you four. An alchemy, which turns a white item rare, will also have a minimum of at least four. It can sometimes make you think that there's only three. Um, and that is because uh, there's something in PoE called hybrid stats, uh, which can be a little bit confusing. We now need to talk to Clarissa. Uh, so that's why we left, because the progression commands that we leave. Uh, we can talk to Maramoa, and we can pick up Flammability. That will give even more Ignite chance. I like having this on T. Always attack without moving. But yeah, the Chaos Orb will reroll. So, between 4 and 6 stats. Um, and Chaos Orb is the main, like, low-end currency for trading, and then there will be other currencies later on for like high-end expensive trading. But uh, you can buy a lot of things for a few chaos that are very good. We're going to unlock the sewer rate and we're going to run through here. And this is a place where if you have not bothered uh, resist capping, these will be really scary. Now what they do is that when you kill their friends, they will start gaining charges. So you can see that blue charge around the monsters. Uh, it's because it's sad that you're killing its friends, it gains those charges, and then they will do a large elemental attack called Discharge. And you can actually die in one hit very quickly if you don't have any resist at this point. So he's just sad you're killing his friends. You monster. How dare you. And in this zone, there's one of the quest items before the waypoint and two after. And it's always like that. New Sapphire Ring. You will always be picking up every ring and every amulet. That's because it's always one slot. So it's very cost efficient for your inventory. Now, why did I not run directly to that one? That's because, again, I know all the layouts. So I knew that I had to run here anyway. But this is a bit of a bait because you run to the left and then you start looking and trying to find the last one and you can't find it. Bastard. All right, we're going to identify that. It does have a recovery life rate, which is probably the second best class mod you can get after the instant ones. There is another hideout in this zone. So you can go in there if you want another, like, different look for your hideout. It's purely cosmetic. This is a brutality shrine. I actually like right-clicking these and destroying them. Um, because what the buff does is it makes me knock back, and I hate it. But you can actually disable your buffs by clicking them up there. And now you're maybe starting to feel really powerful at this point. Good. Now, another thing that's neat. We are now here. And these are very nice. Because now if I realize that I really need dexterity or I really need strength, I can spend a point to grab that early. This is very normally used. Because I would rather use a skill point than try to find that on gear early on. Now, later on, you will get it on gear. Because um, your skill tree will be so intense later that every point really counts. But at this point, very easy to just pick that up here and there. 
8,000 hours and I didn't know that. Yeah. There's another trial in this area here and we are actually getting pretty close to ascending. There's nothing else than the trial in this zone. So as soon as we have that, we can portal out and leave. And obviously we picked up the waypoint so that we can portal back to that from town without losing any progression. Now, normally, as I said, I would ignore Val side areas, but because we do need a Val detonated, we're actually going to get it. Now, ideally you do it on the first try like I'm about to do now. However, if you don't get it on the first try, you might have to run loads. Thunder ring. There's a minion ring. We don't use minions, so not important for us. Streamer lacking coming. I hope so. I've set it up for it. It'll be a good clip. Now we have to fight a little bit of a boss. This one will one shot you in melee range with that slow wind up. To be fair, as you can see, it is very slow. Okay, we did not get what we want. However, there is a Vol recipe. So what you want to do is you actually want to keep these Vol gems. Can't remember what it is right now without looking it up. Because I never use it. But uh, it's like seven Vol gems and something. Is it a scroll of wisdom? I can't remember. Maybe it's just seven Vol gems. Oh, it's a fragment. That's annoying. We'll get those later. All right. Now we're here. We see it's like the bronze monograph. Shows that we're in the right place. Now these are very scary and they kind of train you for the level later. But you see if you're running with them, they do large amounts of damage. Whereas if I'm running through them, they do hardly any at all. So step one here is don't panic. And use your movement ability. I'll try to keep track of how many charges you have. You can go back to town. Don't even need to ID those. I'm gonna hand in our quest here. Again, so nice that we don't have to pick up our quest. Now, even though this is a minion ring, I will identify it because I've had like 30, 40 life and some resist. That would be very nice. But as you can see, until I am vendoring most of the things. Now, I did previously talk about qu uh, quality on gear. Now, if you sell, and you might have noticed that I picked up the quality blade trap. If you sell for a total amount of 40 quality, you will get whatever adds quality to that item. So for weapons, it would be blacksmith whetstones. For armors, it would be armor scraps. Or for gems, it would give you something called a gem cutter prism. Now, I have this that's 20 quality. That's why it's giving it. But if you do pick up a bunch of them and sell them, they will give that as well. So it's worth picking up. Especially because quality is very strong. We are going to go back to the crossroads and we're going to do the trial thing. So we do need that to ascend. Now, here I don't really care about killing anything except for regaining fast charges. Uh, will this become a video on a shorter friend? Yeah, I always upload one of these. Now, initially when I started doing these, I actually got a lot of backlash. Some people said I was stupid for making six or seven hour videos. Um, but a lot of people like having them as like long background content and learning the game and picking up some tips and tricks. So people generally have stopped making fun out of uh, a few of them got over 300,000 views on a 7 hour video, which I'm very happy with. I feel like it's a good way to teach people because you get to cover everything. Now again, I will be doing the Vol side area here. Yo, nice locked in Vol side area. Are there areas that are common for Vol side? No, there's nothing you can like keep reloading. Just do the ones that you see. You can get them as early as Act 1. Might as well pick up the rares here. Don't need blues. 
We're just running to the end of the zone. These have a very randomized layout, but they're pretty linear. Another boss here. This is one that's a little bit more dangerous than the last one. But we're so overleveled that they do die very fast. Well, Volcanic Fisher. We can log out. No! We should not have logged out. I'm stupid. We're going to get the uh <laughs> the the trial. How you doing? I'm I'm doing okay. Don't do anything I would. So we need a gem called Val Detonated in, that's why we're doing this. Can Val Sliders have reflect? They can. If they have reflect, they if it says LA reflect, you will just die. So keep an eye out for that. That's a great thing to mention, thank you. To be fair, I just realized we don't use Wild Detonate Dead in this. I'm stupid. We don't need to do Wild Side Areas at all. I completely forgot. We are going to need something called Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction. Um, so, so um, I'm just so used to DD using Wild DD. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a new uh, this league and I haven't played this before, so it's... Uh, it's good that I remembered. So we don't actually need to do any Wild Side Areas. We will, however, need to do Lab for an extended amount of time. We haven't done lab yet, and I'll explain that later. I am most likely going to cheat on that because that can actually take up to two or three hours, and it's quite important. It will take less time later when you're doing uh, the third lab, but we are actually going to cheat for that. So maybe somebody in chat can prepare a detonated of chaining for me. Um, like Even if I got it on the first try, that would be very unrealistic. I can't remember what the odds are. I think you're like 96% chance after 30 labs or something. But either way, it's um, definitely something that could take some time. Definitely something that could take some time. And you want to have gems with you. And we'll, we'll show you that now because we are about to ascend. 30 normal labs. Yeah, 30 normal labs. I'm not sure how many of the third lab like Merc Lab. 96.43. Cool. Alright. And again, here you see how powerful it is to just run through the traps very quickly. There, we picked that up. Now we just need one more and we can actually go to the lab. Are you better off running normal or merc lab? So the first or the third one. I normally run the first one because I like getting it early. But since we don't need this until merc lab, honestly, on this one, on this gem, since it's not something that's... I'm not going to switch to detonated early anyway. Uh, you probably would do merc lab. However, I do want to switch a bit earlier on this just to show it off. I do find like act 6 to 10 is a little bit more redundant in the everything explains. We'll see. I'm feeling pretty good at the moment, so I might just go all the way anyway. I don't really need to go to bed for another five hours. So it's actually okay. I don't mind making it a longer one. Especially because I really do want to show off the swap. That would be quite important to show off. But yeah, we don't need the uh, the wall side areas. I'm so sorry about that. Hope you didn't do too many. They are nice to do anyway for the rewards. Are totem builds bricked this thing? No. Why would totem builds be bricked? I'm starting a totem build. Actually, a lot of people are. Depends on what type of totem. Um, so people are probably referring to some totem builds, like um, Ball Lightning of Static got bricked this thing. Ball Lightning of Static got ruined for uh, a specific build. And that was very popular. But no, totems in general are fine. There's loads of totem builds you can do. Yeah, a lot of people wanted to do that as a starter. Yeah, I know Steel Mage is starting Ball Lightning. They still Chaos Resist on the belt. We don't care about that this early, though. Now, we are going to run to the left here. There are two zones we have to progress through. 
And um, again, don't be worried if you are like a lot higher level or a lot lower. That's fine too. However, you do not want to be lower level than 23 here. So let's talk a little bit of how, how does XP work in Path of Exile and the zone you're in. So the way the system works is you have a base limit of you're getting full experience when you are three levels above or three levels below the zone you're in. So if you're level five, you're getting full XP in a level two zone or a level eight zone. However, every 16 levels, this counter gains plus one. So at level 16, you get full XP in a level 20 zone or in a level 12 zone. So that's how that works. So right now, if I was like level 36 here, I'd be getting very low XP, or if I was level 22. Now obviously being one level above or below is not a big deal, but once it's starting to be two or three, we'll see like it goes from like things like 11% to 26 to 40. So three levels above and beyond is very bad. That being said, overleveling is still really good and you do gain so much power and you'll find more gear. More uniques and stuff like that. This is a completely useless unique for us called Shiver Sting. But it would be really cool if we were doing splitting steel or anything mailing. Now at this point, the biggest unique, I don't even know if you can find a barrack ring naturally, but a barrack ring would be the biggest thing you could possibly find if you can find it. A lot of the rings will add damage and can be really good at this point. We'll identify the unique before selling it. What I prefer, Caspian. All right. Where's my water? Water. We're gonna go back to the battlefront. Yeah, I'll be starting Explosive Arrow just because nearly every streamer will be starting this build and I just don't want to play the same, even though there is a reason uh, so many people are playing it. Right, so that ghost went into this now. This is actually going to be pretty dangerous. So this will repeatedly curse me and you can see in the top left I'm getting cursed. And it's uh, freezing, a little bit scary. Dropped a bunch of white items. Not really needing to explain that because you are not going to discover them lastly that it's being uh, removed. You will not discover white sockets, but basically any gem independent of color goes into white sockets. Let's see, is there anything else I've under explained that I can explain more while we're moving forward? So we've said how we scale the damage, how gems work. There is one more thing that I want to explain about gems and that is about the sockets. There's a, almost a four link. Um, now, if I hover over Frostbling, you see that both the Frostbling and the Arcane Surge is being highlighted. Here, if I hover over Combustion, you can see that the Rolling Magma is being highlighted, or if I hover over Rolling Magma, you can see that both of them are being highlighted. And that's how you can tell that it is actually working. It'll also say on the gem, there will be a letter appear. If a letter does not appear on the gem, it does actually not work, even though you might feel that it should work. No letter, no worky. Yeah, all of that is mentioned. Three hour, three thousand hours today. I learned. There's so many things that I remember. I was doing a Path of Exile University lesson for like Poe 101, and there was something like that that I mentioned that's a little bit obscure. And I remember Gucci Prades, who's like probably like top five best players in the world, uh, and he was like, "No shit, I learned that just now." And that was just so funny to me that somebody has like 15 to 20,000 hours and they still might not know some of the like basic things that aren't super necessary to know. So two letters is two links. Yeah. So this is now a three link. We call that. We do call this a three link. I, I, I would understand if people would say it should be called a two link, but we do call it a three link because there are three sockets linked together. But the gem obviously only gets two supports. In this zone, you always want to run to the left. Here's the strong box. Now you can roll strong boxes. We're only going to do that during the campaign if we see an Arcanist strong box. There's another one later on worth rolling called Diviners. 
And honestly, next patch cartographers might be worth rolling as well, but as in the late game. I have 2,000 hours and I just learned from this that you could craft on a white item. That's one of the things that I try bringing up so much because it's a very non-obvious thing and it makes a very large difference. And through here... Oops. We are going to pick up the dex one because I can't remember what I need, but I think it's dex. Now, I will show this just because I usually skip it. There is a recipe in here. And this is for fire damage and that's why we want to pick that up. Right, we're going to identify our amulet. I mean, it's better than what we have. Uh, we're going to vendor everything else. Honestly, identifying before vendoring is not bad because we are going to start getting towards needing more rares. Now, at this point, I want to look for a four link. We are about to switch. Perfect. This is a four link and honestly, it is perfect base for us. It is not perfect colors right now. Well, is it? Is our Armageddon brand for blue? It is. It's for blue. So it is perfect colors and perfect base, but we do need a second four link for our setup. So we are going to start carrying. We do need a two green and two blue. So we're going to go back to act two because act two can now um, sell four links, which it didn't use to before. There is nothing here. So we are now looking for that. Now, sadly, this has bad stats on it, but it does have an open suffix that we can craft resist on. We're now going to go to the sewers because we have the quest item needed to break through the sewers. We're going to pick up Explosive Impact. This gives us AoE. So the, the radius of that attacking and hitting now will be larger, which is really nice. Now, we did get percentage fire damage that we can craft on ones now. So if we get a wand with lots of flat fire damage, we can actually um, ca uh, craft percentage fire damage on that. See, the Prolif is coming in handy now as well. There's a dude called Gravitius here. We are going to skip him because we are going to do the library quest. I can't even fully remember if we need to do the library quest, but you're just better off having the library quest. Gravitius lets you buy some new gems. However, you can buy all of those in the library anyway. So it's kind of redundant doing both. Seski, thank for the 35. You can skip him? Yes, sir. Are you saying free armor brand? No. You are right. And we don't have a chance orb yet. So I actually should kill him. We've been a little bit unlucky. I think this is the most unlucky I've ever been in a Everything Explained on currency. Like, usually I get to, like, explain most currencies before now. But yeah, you're right. We, we should kill him for the armor brand, too. Save a chance orb. <laughs> I'm exiled ult, true. I also don't have a fusing. A little bit unlucky. Loads of monsters from that strong box. It's a little scary boss here, but if you hug this wall, you won't have to encounter him. It's basically Brutus, but a little bit meaner. going to keep walking through the zone. We did find a four link there, but it's all red and the base is all about red. Like it's a strength base called warp plates. So it's very uninteresting to us. So you see that this uh, scepter that I just picked up had 30% increased burning damage. Burning damage and fire damage over time multiplier. While it might sound like really good stats for us, we aren't caring that much about our ignite and our damage over time right now. We're kind of scaling both. So, it's not the end of the world, they're not awful, but you generally want 100% ignite for that to be something you care about. Colossal life flask, we generally will pick up every like relevant life flask. Now, I might use some alterations now because now I'm starting to want an instant recovery flask, and they're quite common to actually roll. But I will continue picking up rares because we will run out of alterations. And 
notice my arcane surge is still at level one. Now you might notice that my arcane surge is proccing every single time that I use my uh, frost bling. And the way that works is the higher you level the support gem arcane surge, the more mana spent it will require before it gives you its little blue buff. Um, so we keep that low level. It gives us a smaller buff, but I can always proc it whenever I want to. Whereas if I level that up to, let's say, level 20, I might have to cast five or six frost blings before it goes off. Is this the live Let's Play With Me? Uh, well, it's a everything explained. It's slightly different than a Play With Me. Same concept, though. Play With Me is more things I do, like, later in the league. And, and I don't assume that they haven't played Path of Exile before. In this, I am assuming that they haven't played Path of Exile before. Right, there's a few more things we can start explaining uh, that are starting to be irrelevant. So you've already... Ooh, can we let you go in? No, I killed it too fast. So you've already noticed that we have stats, we have strength, dexterity, and intelligence. But other than being requirements for stats to, or gear to be worn, what does it do? So you can hover over them to see. So strength gives life and melee damage. Um, int gives mana and energy shield. And dexterity gives accuracy and evasion. And they're actually built in Path of Exile, completely uh, reliant upon scaling that for damage. So you would actually have two or three thousand dexterity, for example. Another Chaos Orb. That's quite lucky. I've been a little bit unlucky on a lot of other orbs. But two Chaos Orbs this early is pretty great. Normally we would have dropped an Orb of Chance. Orb of Chance just changes a item to any rarity, including has a small chance to turn it unique. It is not going to, but it can. Um, I'm going to pick up the recipe here while she has a little speech. And then now, especially on bosses, we do want to use the flammability curse. That also makes sure that she's ignited. And obviously we have that mastery that as long as something's ignited, we are dealing way more damage. You can see that like red glow around her. We'll pick up the shadow scepter. Oh, nothing really crazy. Well, Tetris a little bit just because getting a lot of alterations at this point is very nice. Do you ever actually use chance orbs on items? No, not really. Mostly to buy things from the vendor. Um, okay, we're going to vendor everything else. We will check the vendor again. Eh. The diamond ring, not worth it. So we're looking for a two green, two blue. We don't have a fusing, so we wouldn't be able to buy that. Um, now we need to go talk to Grigor. I forget this quite often. He will give us a skill point. Also, I can delete these Vol Gems, seeing as I realized we will never need them. Now, we check the Path of Building and see if there's any specific mastery we need here, but we don't. And now we can, like, switch from Normal Lab to where it says Crow Lab, and then we see that we're going to continue here on the left. Um... We're gonna go. We will. We will bother killing Arishius and just to get the free Armageddon brand. Um, normally, hopefully, would have a chance orb or two by now. You will need two. If you don't have two, you should kill Arishius. That's great that somebody pointed that out. But they're pretty common. Do you often use refund points while leveling? No. Quite infrequently. It'll be labeled with like respec in the POB if it does. As you can see, we have so much damage now. He can actually be kind of scary, but we kill him so fast. Little ghost. Little ghosty ghost. Another coral amulet. They're pretty common. At this point, I would prefer my normal amulet, though. You know, it doesn't have too many sets. Should I add Enduring Cry Loop to my layer of defense? I'll be putting that on almost every build in the next patch. Hey, Sephiroth. Alright. 
Let's see. These are pretty scary monsters. They're called porcupines and um, especially new players really hate them. And that's because they usually come in packs that will end up just blasting you down and killing you quickly. However, having any evasion makes them very trivial because they are uh, an attack, not a spell. So they will basically just die and do nothing. But without evasion, they are mega dangerous. Now, we have already seen the next area that we're going to, but we do want to go find the waypoint first. Because we are going to have to come back here if we don't. Thank you for the sub stout. Take a break pretty soon too, right before the lab. Obviously, people watching on YouTube can skip that. We did get a green, green, red, blue. I do wonder if I can use that. I can. I could use cruelty. So it's not ideal. Obviously, as you see in the build guide, it is green, green, then blue, blue. And they are listed in order of importance. But uh, instead of concentrated effect, I guess I could use cruelty. All right, we got the last one. Um, there is a recipe there. It's just like some damage over time reduction or something. I can't remember what it is. I just remember it's not important. The quills that shoot out are an attack. Yeah, if you have evasion, they do very little. But it's not very clear what things are in Path of Exile, so a lot of people don't know that and then end up dying to them. But once you have a bunch of evasion, they do pretty much nothing. Now you can see, even though we're like not like crazy overleveled, we're two levels over the zone. Uh, on Hardcore, I normally recommend being eight levels over the zone. And uh, yeah, we're, we're just destroying things. Not a very good scepter. We're going to look and grab the waypoint here. Have another life skill point. So we have 856 life. And it can be a little bit tricky to find where the way down is in this zone. There are quite a lot of dead ends. When I'm ready, I'm not quite a lot of dead ends. So this is another zone that if you full clear it, don't feel too bad. But the way down is after Sayosa, not before. So you don't have to full clear the first part at least. There, we have to collect four golden pages, bring them to Sayosa. Now, Sayosa is a bit of an annoying vendor, and you might notice that I'm keeping all my currency in my inventory. And Sayosa actually um, needs the currency to be on you and doesn't access your stash tab. Very annoying. About to level up, gain a little bit more life. We do also gain life while leveling. So you saw that I went from 850 something to 873 life. So flat life is gained while leveling. Too much Four link, but not colors we want. And we already have perfect colors for the chest, which we can put on now. Now, it might be tempting to use alterations on the chest, but since the mana, mana is always a prefix on gear, so I know that I can just um, craft resist on the chest anyway, making it the same as a white base, but with some mana on it. I grab this. Yeah, fluffed. Let's see. So, we're gonna lose some resist. We're gonna go put fire rest on this. And then. We can just throw that in there for now. We're obviously going to change soon. Um, I am a little bit screwed. I've been so unlucky that I have not found... Um, that's crazy. Well, I'll pick up an Armageddon run. Where is it? We'll just swap later. I don't know. We get cremation for free. So we don't have any greens. A little bit annoying. But we will get that soon. Um, oof, the boots are so bad. I will keep them. There you go. And we don't have a fusing or jewelers to get the colors that I need. That's annoying. 
But that's fine. It's good when things go wrong. Because hopefully most people won't have it go wrong. But it's it's nicer to be able to show off things actually going wrong than things just happening perfectly. So that's good. We'll go back to Act 2. That is what I would do at this point. What's he been doing it wrong? Um, two hours, roughly. It's very top-heavy. So we have no fusing, and there's no foiling for sale. Ugh. I mean... No, I can't use... I, I do need multiple greens, so I can't use one. Right, we'll go here. I want to take a short toilet break. Obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to just fast-forward through this. Go right back. Hello! I have returned. I guess I can't figure out most POBs without them. Yeah, it will be on YouTube. They're always on- Honestly, they're more meant for YouTube than they are meant for, like, live on Twitch. I just do them on Twitch because why not? Why not do them anyway? So I'm gonna close my window.
Sometimes stat comes in handy too. True. Alright. We have no micro transactions. Devastating. Right, we're very unlucky. Um, so we are gonna have to Honestly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do lab before switching. Right, we get to pick a uh, support gem here. I can't remember if there is anything that we want to pick up for free. Um, probably not. No. We'll grab fire pen, but we're not gonna buy anything here. Um, yeah, we can really buy the thing we need. Honestly, I don't even know if we need it to the library. Uh, we are, however, going to go ascend. Yeah, I make a new account just so that it is literally a free account because you absolutely do not need to spend any money on this game for your first... As a new player, probably your first 40 hours, 30 hours, depending on how long it takes you to get to maps. Um, trading without sash tabs is awful. So you will need to buy at least one premium sash tab to trade. I don't know how much... Is it $6? I don't know. They have a first blood supporter pack. It's worth buying. Now, the layout on the um, normal lab, the one we're doing right now, is very straightforward. Um, however, for our layouts, you can go to peewelab.com. Then you can see that you've been trained to dodge traps by all the other stuff. And life regen is very nice here, and having multiple life flasks. Turtle hideout supported by Clux Juicy. It is. It's nice. I bought it. I wish it zoomed out more, though. How does it take 70 hours to finish the X? Well, that's just if you're um, IGN. IGN in one other article said that it, has, it boasts a long 70 hour campaign. Which is crazy to me, but hey. As a comparison, Cove Carnage and Dance Gaming, when doing their first playthrough of Path of Exile in a full lore playthrough, did roughly 30 hours. That's while listening to everything every NPC has to say. Right, so this is Zaro. So you can see here the Conduit of Storms. This is buffing him, giving him lightning damage. And you can see that, again, rolling in circles trivializes the entire game. I don't even need to look at the screen right now. Like, I'm looking far away, but as long as I'm rolling in a circle, I'm completely safe. And um, these things, they give fire, cold, and lightning damage to Zaro. I'm now going to click them, disabling them, and then dealing damage to him. Now, if I kill him before they come up, then he will not have those buff in the next zone. Um, however, if I let all three of them be up, up, he will drop an additional golden treasure key, letting me open an additional chest at the end. And as you see in normal, we're always just running to the top. Oh, it's actually not the correct place, but it's like a side digression. Now there are some things you can do to make it easier and stuff, which isn't a bad idea if you're a new player. There'll be some side areas that'll have a debuff for the boss disabling a mechanic. But honestly, it, especially on this build, you'll be so strong, it should not really matter. As you can see there, like, he also doesn't do that much damage. Now, there are different Izaros. Um, it's also, these things can give you a buff. This is called the Dark Shrine. Um, I'll show you that now. But yeah, there's Izaro with a shield and sword, one with a mace, and one with two one-handers. So this is an additional treasure key. That's nice for me, because obviously we mentioned that I would quite like to find uh, a chance orb and um, normal lab is very rewarding for where you are. You'll get a decent amount of reward. And that is part of the reason why a lot of people that need to transfer your gem later, especially if it's something they can already use in the campaign, um, like on hardcore especially, you can spam normal lab and then you're super over leveled. You'll find so much currency like alchemies, fuses and stuff like that. 
On this one, I'm just gonna kill them fast. I don't really, like, it doesn't buff him. It just has like a stupid minion. Oh, I should curse him. So he has a few different skills. The slam is the most dangerous one, as well as the barrage from the goddess. running through do you play on predictive no so as far as um, game networking goes I always play on lockstep so what's the difference between lockstep and predictive on predictive it's basically um, telling the server I am here and the server says sure uh, whereas on lockstep so it's basically lockstep is basically TCP and uh, predictive is UDP and on lockstep it basically says I am here and the server says yes you are here so UDP or predictive can feel really, really nice uh, on higher ping or if it's really laggy. Um, but I would only do that on software. It can um, cause a large amount of desync and you will die to it now and again. Networking class flashbacks, please sis. Yep, it'll be on YouTube. There is the last trial, and now we have to fight the final version of Azaro. An An ah. You must navigate your empire through trouble. A period two, especially early, we'll have less things to learn. It'll be a harder game, I think, but. Uh, I did talk to some people that hadn't played much PoE 1 and they'd only played like 30 hours and they found it like harder but simpler to learn. So that was interesting. It was really cool hearing other people's experience. Alright. So again, just move a lot. Here we get three treasure keys. And then we look through and see what does he have that I can actually use. Everything else is just mostly trash I don't need and there is a chest in here you can bank at oh we got lucky we got a lot please give me a fusing or a chance or brother I'm so unlucky that's kind of crazy actually crazy unlucky all right I wouldn't mind rendering that unique right um, at this point, we do actually want to throw in a gem here. In best case scenario, this will now turn into the green gem that we need. Detonate dead of, um, Cheney or whatever it is. Now, I didn't get it, so that was a little bit unlucky. And we don't care about any of these. There will be others that will be sought after. That can be expensive too. But yeah. I will switch at some point and probably ask somebody... Just to give me one. Um, right, now we're gonna do a Necromancer. So this is our Ascendancy. This is like multi-classing kind of in some other games. And uh, in the POB, it does actually list in some of the different trees what you take first. So because we are going in Corpse Heal, we're going Plague Bringer. Does not do anything for us pretty much right now, but it will eventually. Um, if anyone watching, could anyone volunteer to get me a level like 3 or less detonate dead of chaining? The one's fine and I'll level it up. Just so I have one, because I don't I don't want to run like up to honestly, like it could be, you could be really unlucky, right? Like you're never guaranteed to get it. So you could run 50. Could take forever. Wow, this is a crazy good one. So explain why this is good. This is 33% increased fire damage, the implicit is 20 spell damage, and we have 18 to 27 fire damage to spells. Um, and, let's see, what's... So right now, I don't want to get rid of my three blue, because I am using that right now, so I'm going to move these down here. And then we're going to put that up here. Now, there are orbs that would let you change, but we don't have one of those right now. This one's not bad either. 
Okay, helmet. Um, we're not gonna keep that though. Right, and we don't care about that. Don't do anything I would. Isn't it an average of 11 labs for the gem you want? Yes, but I don't think that is going to add a lot to, to this video of watching me run normal lab between 10 and 30 times. That's why I'm asking if somebody can grab me one just so we can save time. Because it is something that can take quite a lot of time. You can either run normal lab or you can do it later when you're in Merc Lab. Uh, do we need anything else? No. I just wanted to add the data point. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's it's not too un it's not too hard to get one, but you it's something that you can be unlucky with, and I, I don't want to make the video unnecessarily longer. It's also why I try to go pretty fast. Oh, I'm on D and D. Wow, five orb of augmentation. I don't think I've ever been this crazy unlucky on a chance or, or a fusing. That's wild. That's wild. If you're playing Explosive Arrow, why the Necro DD run? So this is for new players that are wanting to try. And honestly, it might be... I, I am looking for feedback for this because this build might be too complicated compared to something like Explosive Arrow. But I already have an Explosive Arrow Everything Explained that is still quite relevant. Um, so I don't think there's a super good reason for me to do a new one right away. And there's so many players, especially like maybe even new players that aren't like super new that want to play this build. Um, because they hear every streamer is league starting this. So I feel like this is the most beneficial Everything Explained I could do this league. Because this is going to help a lot of people that aren't completely new, as well as new players. So I'm just doing this so other people can learn. And then I'm explaining everything I'm doing. I'm trying to explain gear and things like that as well. And uh, speaking of gear, we can do a little look-see at my gear and explain why I'm wearing the pieces I'm wearing right now. So right now we obviously explain the one we just found, and then we still have this bad one we found earlier, but it does have the 12% spell damage. We do want a new one pretty soon though, but we also want to keep links. So the helmet, good stats that it has is cold and lightning wrist. I don't think we need the intelligence at all for anything, so that's kind of whatever. Um, best stats on an item is okay to have, but obviously if you're relying on stats on an item, taking it off can break your build temporarily. The chest is just for the links. We are going to be going to four links soon. And honestly, we could switch our four link in here already. Detonate dead of chain reaction if you need. Um, what's the quality do? Okay, the quality just makes it larger. You don't happen to have one without quality, do you? I would prefer... I, I do prefer showing things as, like, authentic as possible. But at least the quality doesn't increase the damage. It does just increase the radius. I don't? Okay. If I do get another one, I will prefer that. But thank you so much. I appreciate that. Scour it? Scouring it reduces the level, not quality. I also don't have a scour. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate that. Corrupt it? Don't have other. But at least we have a gem there. Well, bandits, do I kill them all or help Alera? Kill them all. On almost every build. No problem, I was done practicing with it. Awesome, thank you so much, dude. What DD build is best for a fairly new player? Probably this one? Yes, I do want to do cremation right now. You're absolutely right. I've been so unlucky that I've not found a chance orb or a fusing. What 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 is happening to me right now is why Exilecon lost the um sorry, Exile lost the Exilecon race. Because of this. Like he most likely would have won. And people calculated the odds and stuff, and not having either a fusing or a chance orb right now is very unlucky. Why Necromancer over Elementalist? It's just so insanely strong. Elementalist doesn't give anything for DD. Whereas Necromancer gives so much with like the corpse nodes 
You get block. It's just by far better. It's insanely strong. Can't you buy a chance on this town's vendor? Not for any of the stuff that I have. I think for 16 alterations, I can buy a town's orb or something. And maybe it's just 8. It's a large amount. Right, here is where we unlock the Scion. Until you've done this, you cannot play the Scion class. And this is only a one-time unlock. I think Necro is always better. I haven't missed a chance for him. Yeah, I make a new account that is more realistic for new players. You'd bite the master that called you here, which Right, so this is Dominus. First, you have to fight waves of monsters. This is the fight you definitely want to be rest kept for. You can see that they're coming out one at a time out of the pods here in the middle. They're like trapped experiments. Have you ever seen the true face of God exile? I have. Nightmare. And you notice that for bosses, so now I'm putting down the firewall, I'm putting down the holy flame totem, and I'm cursing with flammability. And then I'm spamming Rolling Magma. Oh yeah, I could throw in... Honestly, for now, I did find an FXC. It's 15% more. No, it's only damage over time. Um, I don't want the early focus. How annoying. Okay, I'll go buy something useful at some point. I wasn't planning on staying for Rolling Magma this long, to be honest. Yeah, this used to be the final boss of the game for a while. Right, let's see. Any four link? No, nothing interesting here. But we are now unlocking a second town that we can try to get a four link in. Do you see an essence over there? I'm gonna go grab. And normally it would have swapped out at this point, so our damage is gonna suffer more and more. Just sad. Very sad. Um, yeah, it would be like all eight alts. That's so many alts. Like, that's a lot of rare item pickup. Especially for something that I should have three of by now. Thankfully, most people watching will have this. But we might as well show off the vendor recipe system and do it anyway. Poor bird. We'll be switching to this grid soon. We're probably about to do the switch now anyway. Armory extension not displaying the correct tune. I'm on a different account. Alright. Um just gonna kind of, Oh, I should ID everything because I'm about to nuke all my alterations. My poor, poor alterations. Right. Please, any four links. There's a five socket, which is item level 35 and higher. Any four links. I see no four links. This is devastating. I'm watching you. You are most. Ball lightning is probably the best lightning skill. Arc is pretty trash. Right. Um. We are going to move on to the left. Right. Anyway, if we look here, you can see that uh, for fusing, 
weaken my chancellor. So how do we get a fusing? Well, we need four jewelers. That's one, two, three, four. That was eight alterations. And I buy one fusing and I buy one chance orb. And now we can go buy Armageddon Bren. Devastating. Why no more bay class anymore? I don't know why you're asking somebody who isn't on bay class why there's no bay class anymore. Uh, right, now we're going to do the switch. So we look up the guide and we see all the different things. So at level 38, we can actually use Ignite Proliferation. Um, so we're going to switch out that with Rolling Magma. We don't need that anymore. Um, and then we keep that. We want the Combustion. And then we want something called Immolate, which we don't have yet. So honestly, right now I'm going to throw that in. I don't actually have a gem, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it open. But at level 38, after killing Darasso and Comb, we will um, get a nice gem there. Because I don't want to use Control Destruction. I guess I could use Faster Casting wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, hmm. I have no green sockets. This is annoying. What trouble you bring now. But yeah, we do a podcast every lead called Stalling. I'll be on YouTube. Man. Okay, this works. This works. So, why does this work? Well, it's an evasion and energy shield base. So, I have 16 chromes. So, getting two green, two blue on this should be pretty likely. Um, and then now, I can either craft fire resist, like what I've done, or I can use an alchemy and hope that I get something good, but at the risk of the downside being that it could fill up the suffixes with bad stats. What's the podcast generally about? Path of Exile. Uh, we're gonna fire up some fire res there, and boom, we now have cremation. We can go to the library, because we can buy any gem here. Now, it will be low level, but that's fine. They'll level fast anyway. We have Desecrate. I do need a green somewhere. That works. Uh, we just needed one green. Uh, we need a lesser multiple projectiles. And we have the Ellie Focus already. And I will go over everything to make sure you're following along. Concentrated Effect. Let me look at Armageddon Brand. We have everything there except the level 38 gems. Both Ignite Proliferation and Emulate is level 38. So we can't use those yet. Let's see, we can use Frostbling with Arcane Surge. Skitterbots in there. Uh, leveling Auras, pre library, post library is Determination, which we don't have enough strength for yet. And haste, but I'm probably not going to use Haste. Um, once I get one more level. Uh, am I too lazy to use wave of conviction? No, I'm not. I'm not too lazy. Wave of conviction. So, wave of conviction is something we're going to use for debuffing. Alright, let's move these around a little bit and we're toggling on the always attack without moving. I really don't need frost bling anymore. I'm just going to have flame dash. Uh, we'll put that here, but I also have that here. Uh, what else do I want? I want Wave of Conviction. And the way Wave of Conviction works is this is a spell that does a debuff. We're going to explain my entire setup that we've switched to right now and then what everything does. Oh, you're right. We could still keep Flame Wall there. Ah, so many buttons, dude. Yes, it will do damage. I don't think I'll use it though. This is a button insensitivity. But anyway, first let's turn on. Well, we'll gain one more level real quick just because I need to get a 30 strength. Need 30 strength. One more pack. Perfect. All right. Now, I'm going to switch my auras around a little bit, and then we're going to go over everything, because I can now fit Determination. So, let's make a new zone so that we can show off skills and abilities and stuff. So, uh, 
I'm just going to run Determination for now. The next four nodes will lower our Reservation, letting us reserve more stuff on our mana. But for now, it's going to be a little bit annoying to like recast and use mana potions a lot. Could use Arrow of Ash and it would probably feel okay. Um, but uh, yeah. Either way, we're not running Skitter Belts right now. We do have Skitter Belts in the links, so we could run that later. So, right now I have Arcane Surge linked to Flame Wall and Flame Dash. It's a pretty minor buff. Doesn't not, It's nice, but if you can't fit it, this is the thing that can go early. We're using Determination. We're using Wave of Conviction. Herald of Ash. We have a little Elemental Prolif, Armageddon Run, and Combustion. We are going to have um, the, um, what do you call it? Uh, Immolate. And we are going to have Ignite Prolif Support. Um, here we have a Desecrate. This is important to create corpses so that we can summon these volcanoes because there's corpse volcanoes. Um, we have summoned Skitterbots, which we're not using. Holy Flame Totem, which I'm not using. Um, Flammability. Conk Effect. Elemental Focus. Lesser Multiple Projectile and Cremation. So that's all the gems. So how does our new abilities work? So we have Flame Dust just like before. Desecrate summons corpses. This is only useful when we're fighting tanky rares or if we're fighting a boss. So this is like a single target move. On R, we have Wave of Conviction. This is also, again, for tanky things. What it does is it lowers the um, enemy's resist by 15 because we're dealing more fire damage than anything else. Thumb ability. This is our, one of our biggest damage buffs. 25% chance to ignite, but also minus 20 fire resist. Flame Wall, a little bit extra nice. If the cremation projectiles go through it, they'll gain more fire damage. I don't even know if I'm going to bother with that because I think I'm going to have so much damage that I don't care. Um, Armageddon Brand, this is a really, really nice skill. I'll just show that in action. This is what's going to be our clearer skill now. We are just going to run around right-clicking this. And it's called a Brand. And it's a spell that basically... Well, it'll attach itself to an enemy and bounce on it until it kills it. So it's really nice. So very, very smooth playstyle. We have a large amount of damage. Now, this doesn't have a large amount of damage. That's why we have the cremation set up. Like, this is not a large amount of single target. So I'll show on the upcoming boss now, Vol, how much single target it does. But you can see, even here on the rare, it isn't doing too much with just that. And then if I pop cremation then it bursts down everything very quickly. We also do want to pick up every shield we find because getting a plus one fire spell skilled gem shield would be very nice at this point. And you can have three of these brands down. You cannot have multiple attached to one enemy because we do not have the keystone that lets us do that. We also don't care about that. So we're not using the armor brand for single target anyway. All right. Here you can see, once I pop down the cremation, loads of damage comes out. I didn't even pop down firewall, I didn't even use wave of conviction. So, very fast damage without even doing everything. Anything you need, just... Take care. Take care, we just delete this. Boom. And I do keep things in my inventory. Let's see, we can delete the fire pen, we'll keep the haste. We keep the blade trap just for when we're running lab. Um because we might uh, try to get the DD of chaining just in case we would have naturally found it. Although that is quite unlikely. But as you can see, even blue monsters do die quite fast. If you want to, you could throw either a wave of conviction on them. Um, again, if the mana annoys you, uh, stop running Herald of Ash at this point, especially until you get the reservation nodes. But hopefully you'll already get into the gist of this pretty fast. This might even be easier to play. And some people might be like, wow, this Armageddon brand thing feels so good. That's at least my feeling when playing it. Now, here you can see our second master that we found. This is Nico. He's the Lord of Delve, which is like an infinite dungeon. Now, those piles are always worth clicking on because what they can do is they can give you a divination card, um, which will reward you with 10 alterations. So this is super nice. Uh, divination cards are basically shards of something. So in this case, you only need one divination card. It gives you 10 ults, but there will be others that will need um, five of a card to give you an item. Very often uniques. No, cremation does not spread to normal corpses. And we're using Ellie Focus on it, so it does not proliferate at all. Lightning. 
Right, now we're gonna go look for a side quest here. It can be a little bit hard to find, but it does give us heal points. You do want to find it. Hopefully we find it quickly. If not, there will be some backtracking. It could be, like, straight north of me, but it is here, thankfully. Click that. I haven't seen an exile yet, either. Very weird, everything explained playthrough. I feel like there's so many things that I normally encounter earlier. I need noticing my mana is annoying. Um, no upgrade on the amulet. So, especially if something has, like, good sockets, I'll be caring about picking them up. Helmet, I'll probably be very... I'd pick up a lot of helmets now, because the sockets aren't super important on that. I can obviously... I need at least one blue and one red, but I could move one of the reds to my boots. So that's kind of how I think about light gear. Um, I would love a new wand, or I would love finding jewelers. Uh, what a jeweler does is that it randomizes the sockets on a piece of gear. So for example, the wand could go to three sockets. Now, one-handers can never have more than three sockets. Two-handers can have six. Chests can have six. Um... And then you can six sync something as well. We're not gonna have a six sync early though. But would love to get a jeweler. Very weird currency lies. But yeah, we have so much damage right now. You're hopefully starting to understand why so many people are gonna be playing this at lead start. This is an insane build, and this doesn't need any unique item. It goes literally straight to tier 16 maps like the super endgame and it can kill the pinnacle bosses of Path of Exile on no budget at all. This is something that we see people use in the hardest events in Path of Exile and just absolutely decimate with. So now we're looking for like lots of life and resists and maybe an open suffix. Now we're going to go kill Dareso and Comb. After we've killed both of those and handed in the quest, we're actually going to get two big gem upgrades. Uh, this is Detonate Dead. I have a full guide on this with uh, I'm Exile on YouTube. So it's a collab I did with Exile. He is pretty much considered the second best player at the moment and very often competing for first. He is one of the two players that are in a different tier than anyone else. Ben in Exile. Other than that, there's like... Most people are on like very similar level. They are insane. Practice a lot. They've already fixed the uh, FPS drop down with Detonated. Who's the top? Ben. I got third in one of the last races. Behind Ben and Exile. I was like... One day, two hours behind them. Very hard to beat. There was a little boss. Oh, shit out loads of monsters. So this is old. I do okay for my age. I do okay. Third for my age, not bad. One day behind was the gap. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's very big gaps. It was also a race that the prize for first place was the same as seventh. So it was more about can you do it? I think only nine people in the entire league could do it at the time. Because it is very hard. It was the competition to kill all the uber bosses when they were just introduced. No, was I two hours after or one day two hours? I think it was one day two hours. You get XP from killing things, not from hitting things. Tai Tai? Well, Tai Tai only does like short stuff. Like he doesn't do long races. So I don't think I don't think he enjoys that enough to do it. I think anyone can be at that level if they practice. Exile started playing relatively recently and just spent all his time practicing and you just have to be very obsessive to be good at something like that. I think I'm probably the competitive player that practices the least, like me and Steel. 
We never practice? We're very lazy people. Let's scream though. That was a lot of fun. All about practice. Yeah, a lot of people are starting to get hand issues. I've been pretty lucky that I don't have any. Now we're going to go towards preservation efficiency. So as you can see here, we have like a nice combination of things that give us life or utility, like stats. But this also gives us rest. Uh, and now we're about to take something that gives us less reservation, making us have more mana. A nice thing about this is that a lot of the bosses have like that little like animation before the fight. So we actually get to place cremation down before he starts fighting us. So he walks out and actually instantly starts taking damage from that. So you can see that we're phasing each of his stages. No problem at all. He's just getting phased. There, and now we're going to go back to town. I usually don't do show endgame in this. I have a separate video where I show endgame stuff. Like, you completed the campaign, now what do you do? I was we can get rid of that Jade Amulet. We never ended up needing it. Um, now we're going to go kill Calm. Yep, we have a filter. I recommend the Never Sync basic one. I really notice some of those big rares can be really tanky, and if they're really tanky, they're not worth killing. So we see there's an infinite amount of monsters. Sacred Mana Flask, we're gonna grab that. Generally, they like, keeping to upgrade your flask. Whenever you find a new base type, it's quite worth it. Why do you pick DD Necro over Ellie? Because Ellie's pretty trash. Necro gets all the good DD nodes. Way tankier, way better, way faster. I can't think of a single positive thing Elementalist gets. Um, so the reason scepters would technically be better for this is not a big difference, but scepters have elemental damage as an implicit. Exposure. Um, and elemental damage works on ignite. Spell damage does not. It's like the the cast speed and everything on Necromancer is just like it's a it's a whole other level. I don't I don't think I've seen a single person recommending Elementalist. Mostly Inquisitor and Necro. Let's see, Shaper of Flames? Nah. Only positive is not running labs. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Elementalist is trash. In my opinion, I, I don't see an upside to playing it compared to just being Necro. Like eight times faster. I max out showcase all of them, yeah. I mean, it's all what you prefer, but. Uh, what's your opinion on the current implementation on how to get Transfigure Gems? I like it. Ah, wow, this thing is tanky. You really notice every monster with fire and ignite resistant. But it had two essences in it. Now we got a Woe and we got a Torment. Both of these are pretty useful for us. Even though there's lightning damage, we would prefer fire. Yep, Transfigured Gems are core. Yep, Betrayal Guide is slightly out of date on what they do, 
We'll make a new one this thing. Definitely we'll make a new one this thing. It's probably the biggest changes this thing. Mostly up to date. Right, let's see. Look at that damage. So yeah, now we're just like again putting it on the cremation, hitting with the wave of conviction, from a building if you have time fi uh, firewall. But obviously the the boss will be dead before you can do all of this. I, 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 life will go on. That would just make life Upsides of elementalists are always ignite. Prime Legacy can take reflect and extra exposure effects. Yeah, but that's not an upside in my opinion. That sounds like the kind of stuff I should get for my boots. Not something I'd want to switch this NZ for. I don't think it's worth it, in my opinion. You will be remembered. Yes. Uh, let's see. Go where you are needed. Let's see. No, it's never offered in maps. The brand is doing right, might just play that. So the brand will fall off later. Um, it can actually go all the way to like yellow maps, but it will fall off. We now need to go hand in the quest here. And now we're gonna go get some gems. So we need one alchemy to buy one and the other we get for free. So we'll pick up Immolate, and we're going to get rid of Elemental Proliferation. So Immolate basically does um, extra fire damage to burning enemies, which is ni nice. And then Ignite Prolif does the same thing as the Elemental Prolif, but also comes with more damage with Ignite. And now we actually have a pretty decent chance to Ignite. I can't remember exactly, but we can look real quick. So we find Armageddon Brand, and we can see that we have a 25% chance to ignite, and then we have an additional 20% from the um we have an additional 20% from the um the what do you call it? Um flammability. Flammability. There. It's not every day you get to walk into a like ring. This is a very dangerous zone in Path of Exile, and this is where you first start encountering Bleed. Bleed is a very dangerous mechanic, and what makes it so dangerous is that it puts a debuff on you, which is just slowly taking down your life. However, if you move while you're bleeding, you take a lot more damage. So it's very easy to start panicking. You want to run away from the monsters because you are taking so much damage. But when you do run away from them, you're also um, killing yourself. And those purple crystals you just saw, what they do is while you're fighting the monsters, you'll hear like a tink, 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 as the monster is putting purple shards on your feet. However, um, however, uh, when you kill the monster, they all explode and you might have stood still and there could be like 60 of those on your feet. Let's see, what do we pick up here? We're going to have auras have increased effect of you on you. And we're going to move down and we're going to get some more ignite chance soon. Glass bars, bobble. So, um, we haven't really talked about blacksmith whetstones, armor, scraps, and glass bar bubbles and gem coated prisms that much. What they do is they give quality to an item and quality will affect a thing in different ways. So on armor, it will, um, that's funny. 
On armor, it will um, increase the evasion, energy shield, or armor. Um, on weapons, it'll increase like the base damage. This won't do anything for spellcasters, but if you're attacking with a bow or a melee weapon, etc. And if you use these quality things when the item is normal or white, then it'll give 5% quality at a time. If it's on a blue item, like a flask, um, that you sometimes will do it on a flask. When it's blue, it'll do 2% quality at a time, but you can do it on a white flask as well before you roll it, and then again, it will be white and 5 at a time. If you do it on a unique item or a rare item, all quality things are 1%, and if you ever do it on a, um... If you ever do it on a gem, it is always 1% at a time. So the gem card prisms are quite valuable. Quite useful. There's armor scraps, blacksmith whetstones, they're quite common and uh, not very rare. But you do want to pick up a lot of them. Here you can see it takes so much less damage if I'm standing still. So this is actually a pretty tanky boss fight. Um, however, we are obviously very strong. So we should be okay. We just keep trying to keep everything down and be ready to move around her in a circle. Try to stay like opposite of her laser. And you can blink through things too. But before her laser is over, she is dead because we have so much damage. Talk to Piety and then we're going to move down. And then currently, later on, we will be getting Horp Spect and that will be really good for once we have Detonate Dead of Chaining. And that's what makes Necromancer so strong. You get insane amounts of cast speed. You can blink through the laser and not take damage. I don't think you can leap slam or dash through it, but you can flame dash through it. Here is an exile. These are unique monsters that are like mini bosses that are throughout the game and they are us, but like they're rogue. And the way this works is they are, since they are us, they're wearing a full gear set. They will drop rare and unique items quite often. But what's cool about them is you will see that they wear exactly what we do. So they'll have a glove, a boot, chest, helmet, a weapon of some sort, two rings, a belt, and an amulet. So they always drop one of each. Karn is playing Elementless too? That's crazy. I think, I, I don't know. I mean, it is literally just preference, but I think Necro is so much better. Especially for hardcore. That's crazy. This is a very scary boss. Um, honestly, even if all you want to do on this boss is just armor and run and run, that would be good. If you curse her, you can see what she does right now. There. Uh, it's hard to see, but she's now glowing purple. That's because she ate our curse, giving herself unholy might. Um, which is pretty dangerous. It's like a physicist chaos buff, which is getting changed this league to be different. Full conversion. It's going to be very deadly this league. And just portal back to town. Um, here we got a jewel. That's the ones you add in the skill tree. Oh man, really crazy good glove. This is so good that I would keep it because if I found a bunch of jewelers and fusings, things, this has an open suffix that I could craft fire resist on and has 56 life, lots of resist, really, really good. Like that's the type of gear you really want to find What's during the campaign. But since we don't have any jewelers, we don't have any fusings things to like play around with the sockets and make it four linked, then there's not much we can do there. However, it is worth keeping just in case. Cause that is a very nice item. Gonna take out the essence real quick. You do want to have a lot of different crafting stuff just so that you can um, play around with gear when you need it. Because not in this act, but after we kill Katava, we're actually going to lose a bunch of resistances. Every other boss than Dodri, you can curse freely, pretty much. Careful for the big purple explosions, they do lots of damage. Melee is not in a good place to sleep, correct? There. There 
we're gonna hollow life flask. That is basically the best life flask we're going to get now. There are some different flasks uh, until the end game one, but hollowed life is the second best, and then divine life is the best. So here I will actually throw some alterations on. Um, this is a suffix, so I can augment this and hope to get instant life recovery rate. I did get increased recovery rate, which I will keep. Barricade, thank you for the raid, dude. We're doing it, everything explained right now. Did I not pick something up? No, I did. Thank you, thank you, dude. Welcome, everyone. So right now I'm basically showing a full tutorial of the game, assuming that somebody is new to the game. This is Malachi. Very little HP, but has very dangerous moves. So you can see that he will like go down very quickly, and then after he stops taking damage, you can put down your cremation on Piety. Yes, we're fighting Piety again. This is the last time. At least. That move is very scary and can one-shot you. We have to kill Piety again, but after this, he's like, bro, this bitch is helping him or her. So he just like slap. Thank you for the subs, I really appreciate it. I'm a necromancer. I gave my life. Gave me so here you have to kill the little sub hearts and then he will keep teleporting to the new one. They're basically his horcruxes. Why are you so in love with death? There, golden mask. Nothing else that we want to look at. Now, obviously, when you are new to the game, you will spend a lot more time looking at different gear pieces. But obviously, like you can already figure out that you're probably not gonna want a bow or a two-handed staff or anything like that. See, we are starting to get a little bit low on wisdoms right now, so I'm going to vendor 11 wisdom scraps, or sorry, armor scraps. We're gonna go talk to Tasuni and pick up an extra skill point here if I didn't do that already. I did that. I did do that. Now, there is a side quest here from Oyen that gives you a golem gem. We are not going to use one. They're annoying and they get in the way. You have to resummon them all the time and then add an extra button for not enough benefit. Unless you're a golden build, then use them. This is a very dangerous stones. It has monsters that use flicker strikes, so they will just teleport on top of you. It can be incredibly dangerous. I'm getting brand leveled up. This is obviously very important. 15% more damage, just like that. So that's the same as finding a big upgrade. As for like base types and like armor and defense right now, having a little bit of armor innovation during the campaign is pretty huge. Especially once we're able to get a granite or a jade flask. If we're able to get one of those early, they are huge. And that's because they give flat armor or flat evasion. And if you have the armor one, the monsters will basically hit you for nothing. If you have the evasion one, monsters won't be able to hit you. Whereas now you can see that monsters are doing a decent amount of damage to me, even though I have determination and some armor. So I've estimated 50% physical damage reduction. And that's generally like an approximation of how much monsters my own level are going to do. But it does change a little bit. It does not uh, account for like big boss slams. So against a big boss slam right now, I would have 0% physical mitigation. Now. Um, this is an okay wand, and as you can see, it has the potential to be blue, blue, blue quite easily. That's because it's 116 intelligence. So he's one chrome on that. We're now going to go to the hideout, and I am going to craft fire damage on this. So I get uh, up to 34 fire damage on this. Right now, I have a weapon that basically only adds 12%. So now I get some flat to cold to spells, but I get a bunch more fire damage. Huge upgrade. This is actually going to be a noticeable damage upgrade. Because my last weapon was so trash. I also try to be a little bit lazy with upgrading gear while at the same time explaining what you want to do. Because um, if somebody is paying a lot of attention to upgrading gear and stuff, they're going to have an even easier time than what I do. And I think that's pretty ideal. 
But already right now you can see that we're one-shotting pretty much everything. And while Armor Yenbrand might look super tempting to be like, Wow, I just want this to be my build the entire time. It does fall off and has very little single target. So you will need to swap to DD. But it's so nice. It's such a comfortable leveling playstyle. This is a very scary red circle. It means that while I'm inside the circle, I do not recover life unless I'm below 50%. So a lot of builds get completely annihilated by that because there might be really heavy recovery builds. It's basically the same as losing half your health for those. These are righteous fire, very scary. Still do want to pick up quite a lot of armor scraps. Yeah, we are running determination. Right, here we get a ring, so then we look at like, what am I using right now and what do I have? Well, right now, both my lightning and cold ring are quite bad, so I'll take a lightning ring. It is a lot better than what I have. It has all res, it has dexterity, it has fire res, such a nice ring. However, you might notice that my res is now below, um, so I'm going to go to my hideout and see if I have open suffix on any of my other gear. Since I have open suffix on my amulet, I'm going to craft lightning rest on my amulet there hey we're rest capped achievement complete we're gonna go to the left we don't need to talk to valenta until we pick up her skill point later on such a nice feature in my opinion that you don't need to talk to anyone there we have a lot of mana now honestly i'm not gonna bother changing my aura setup um uh, it's just pretty comfortable especially when you're a new player i think having all that mana so we have the Herald of Ash for that like nice like overclear and a little bit of explosion. You could run Skitterbots as well. Skitterbots is technically in some cases nicer because they chill the things making them slower. And it's roughly the same amount of damage. I, need more mana. I do love the like Herald of Ash feel though. Both are nice. There's no wrong choice there. <sighs> there is a quest point. I'm gonna pick that up. You know, clarity with a mana region? I don't like running clarity. I also don't have a blue slot. I barely ever run clarity. Is there any point in this game over rest capping? Yeah, so having 105 res is really nice. It doesn't increase your defense at all, but if you get cursed, then you're still rest cap. Now, technically, you could want 130 because somebody could do exposure to you at the same time as a curse. Most of the time, that won't happen. At the same time, you're taking that element damage. Very perfect storm scenario. On hardcore, you do like doing stuff like that, though. Now, this is pretty tanky, but obviously, we have an insane amount of damage at this point. It'll only get better. Very nice build. Why don't we need to talk to NPCs now? You've never had to in PoE. That was my least favorite thing about Lost Ark was clicking L or E or F or whatever it was. But yeah, you've never had to in PoE. Now we're running around slaughtering frightened citizens. So maybe you realize at this point that yeah, you are in fact the bad guy in the story. We are not the good guy. We're not the protagonist. And most of the things that are wrong in the world are our fault. Engraved wand, we'll grab that. Oh, ow, taking a lot of damage. This is why instant life loss are good. We're gonna ID the wand, we're looking at every single wand, and again, if you didn't remember from last time, we're looking at percentage fire damage, um, and that's also why elemental damage is good on scepters. Spell damage is okay, but it does not scale our ignite, so like the burning damage over time part. Um, you also have, um, what else? Uh, cast speed is not bad, but it's not like a super important stat for us. And fire damage to spells, but also any fire, uh, cold or lightning damage is good too. Alright, hallowed mana flask, we're gonna grab that. Now, I would love this to be freeze. 
This is enduring, so it's worth explaining, but it might be a little bit annoying. I don't know if we'll be able to actually use it, but enduring flask is worth explaining at least. So let me get some charges on it. Now, normally you might have noticed that your mana flask stops working when you're full mana. However, your enduring flask will keep going no matter what. So now that I'm full mana, you can see the little thing under the potion keeps going. Now, if I'm using a lot of mana, a big downside to this is that the enduring mana flask, um, it recovers so slowly. So if I'm using a lot of mana over a short time, it actually won't really help me. So I might want a regular mana flask instead, because that'll recover a lot faster, even if it's not enduring. If enduring feels good, it is generally always better. Keep leveling our gems, obviously big damage boosts, even from the support gems. Big boost. Like everything really matters in PoE. Everything adds up. So this is pretty important. You will notice there's a lot of bases that are kind of subpar that you're never going to use. The cloth belt being one of them. It has stun and block recovery. However, if it had like 60, 70 life and double or triple res, then it's very unlikely we're going to find that. But that is something that you actually would use during the campaign. Right. I'll do ads on Twitch, but I'm, I don't need a break right now, so we don't need to skip ahead on YouTube. But this is just Chamber of Innocence, and this is a farming zone, so this is less important anyway. So I'll throw some ads right now, if you want to go grab a drink if you're watching on Twitch. Now's a good time. So this is a zone that's good for overleveling in. It has so many blue monsters. So it's worth staying here for a while. See. There's some recipes here as well. Look at the different potions until I get one I'm really happy with. Now, I did say that I love instant life flask. I do not like instant mana flask. They're kind of annoying to use. You can try one at some point, but you'll quickly figure out. They're nicer over time. You get more out of them. There, another hallowed life flask. I will transmute that. Oh, we got the chill and freeze. Now I'm going to augment, and we were hoping for freeze, uh, or sorry, instant there. We didn't get it, so I'm going to use all my alterations until we get that. And now we could actually go to bestiary by talking to Einar. And Einar has a cool mechanic where he can forcibly put on um, different flask affixes, but I would actually need a fourth yellow beast for that, and I haven't encountered enough yellow beasts. But I could force it to be freeze immunity or um, bleed immunity. So I'm just going to augment because I'm lazy right now. I got curses. Not very useful, but we do have a nice instant life flask. And then this one's okay. So we'll use those two. And we have two 42 flasks. They recover quite a lot. Should be a recipe here if it wasn't in the start and we missed it. Ah, there's a vile slide area here. We are going to be doing this zone multiple times. Well, we don't really need to do it multiple times because we've gone so slow that we're overleveled. But on Hardcore, you'll see people go all the way to level 48 here. And that's because this is such a good zone to level in. It's got way more density than anywhere else and so many more blue packs. And another thing that's really important. Oh, we will level up a little bit more here, actually, unless I have suffixes somewhere. Um, We don't. Uh, it is cold and lightning, so I'll show a little tip. So we are about to lose 30% resistances, and we are not resist capped after that. Now I am on stuff course, so I can be a little bit cheeky and ignore it. However, what I can also do is I can remember... Oh, I'm so close to this. Well, I was going to say we can take the cold and lightning resist here, but we can actually just power through and one, two, three, four. I'm five points away from, um, from getting a res node. So that'll be really nice. Now, that flask I just picked up is the best flask in Path of Exile. It is the Quartz Flask, and what that gives you is phasing. And the reason for why that is so strong is that it um, lets you go through monsters. You don't get stuck or collide with them, and if you're running through a monster, it starts attacking towards you, and um, it will basically miss you because you're no longer where you were. Uh, it's much wearing DD for the POV for this build. Nice gloves, but bad soccer colors. Bad colors. It's a 
the slam. There's always 10 waves of monsters between each zone, so you can actually count. You go like one, two, and then you're ready for when to put down your effects. Four, for when the boss comes out. Five, six, seven, eight. Thanks, Bella. Nine. So now it's about to come out, so I can start putting down my cremation, and then the boss will basically be instant whenever he comes out. Similar beam to Piety, just run around. Now, in the last stage, you may go to have a portal here. This is more of a hardcore thing, but he can actually do a bullet hell without putting down the protection you're supposed to have to dodge behind the bullet hell. So, we have so much damage on this, even without overleveling here, that it shouldn't be a problem. However, obviously, it can be scary. The bullet hell is really hard to dodge. There. We're gonna pick up the gloves. Well, yeah, we will, just so we can sell stuff. Now, this is one of the other people you do need to talk to. You do need to talk to Bannon here. I'm European, so I can talk to him during the load screen, which you can't do if you're American, because the load screens are too fast. A little fun fact. Here is a strong box. Now, I think that could happen. It could freeze me and have monsters around the strong box as detonated. And then I would have just killed myself by having the Armageddon run down before I opened it. So I would have been frozen and nothing I could do. And I would have to like just log out to try to not die. There. See another wand. Nothing good on that. So we're generally looking for all those stats I mentioned earlier with the fire damage, fire damage to spells. Remember, just f flat fire damage is two attacks. It would be nicer if they just specified two attacks. Can this build do tier 17 blight? There, there's no such thing, but if you mean blight ravage maps, yeah. I guess blight ravage is tier 17. I guess it is. I just never thought of it that way. Yes, it's one of the best builds for it, if not the best build for it. Nope, no zoom answer build coming. We will have loads of league starters. All of them will be up before Friday or on Friday. But we can only post three videos to YouTube a day. And I'm making more than that right now. And some videos will probably come out after, but not build guides. All right. We go to the ossuary. Well, we might as well bank. We do have a skill point to pick up. Let's see, we're going to grab a granite. Granite flask is very strong. And this combos with our existing um, determination aura. We're going to sell a lot of things because we're running very low on alterations right now. Let's see. Uh, honestly, the crit chance is not bad for us, so we'll keep that. We'll run it like that. Most people probably want two life flasks. I would very often run quartz floss now instead of two life loss you will definitely be dropping um that later but especially right now it's pretty okay now we could try to get a new weapon ah ours are pretty good right now we'll just sell things we'll just sell things yeah we have two bill guides on max roll now it takes a lot longer to write it's Sai writing them for me so, we won't have time to do more than two. Because there are a lot more work. But eventually we'll have a lot more. But yeah, for those that wanted written guides, we've started doing that. You can barely read. Max roll for EH amp is great. Yes, I put so much work into that. Because I did want to do something like max roll earlier. I, I actually initially tried paying somebody to um, make a full path of building and forum. Not a path of building, sorry. Make like a long instructive guide for the forums. 
But that wasn't very sustainable. Because it's so many hours of writing. Ends up very quickly being like two to four hundred dollars per video or per guide. And obviously I don't profit anything from the Path of Excel forums versus Maxwell we can monetize, so. That's nice. Right, one, two, three. So we get one skill point from this zone that we're in right now. Oh, this is Delirium. Let's show that. You run through the mirror and you see a copy of yourself as you're running close to it. And now we got quite lucky with a giving currency reward. So now I want to run through this zone uh, before it expires. It sort of expands in a donut shape. Um, and we wanted to kill as many monsters as possible. And you can see that it's filling up in the bottom left. I have hotkeyed ending it to B. I don't know if that's the default. But you could also click here. It'll say what your hotkey is when you hover over it, unless you don't have one. This is the league mechanic, and there are many of them. This is one of people's favorite league mechanics. Very straightforward, there's no backtracking, gives loads of loot and cool rewards. Why would you end it early? Uh, it gets more and more dangerous the further in you get. So at some point you'll be noticing that you might be almost dying. Now this is a nice chest because it's the same base as what I have but it's white. So I can throw a um, essence or whatever on it. Also now that I have four I'm unlikely to hit five here so there's no point in me keeping it going. Um, I do also see that I found an Orb of Binding. I must have clicked that without realizing it. But what Orb of Binding does is it'll make a um, item up to four sockets. Now if it has more, if it has five sockets and it's white and you use an Orb of Binding on it, it will actually go down to four. Same with six. So it'll go down to four, which can be a bad thing. Um, but in this case, uh, I'm just going to use a, a Weeping Essence of Wrath. This will guarantee Lightning Rest. And then we were hoping for something else. We didn't get anything else. And we can try throwing some crumbs on it. We are very lucky on the first try here and got the colors we wanted. That is the ideal scenario. Honestly, in most video games, if you can get something on the first try, that is so much better than using multiple tries to get something. We are also going to use a, uh, I don't have an alchemy, do I? I can use the uh, other cold resist essence here on the helmet. Try to get something good, and we did. We got something called Hybrid Life. That's awesome, because I want to explain that. But yeah, always try to get things on the first try. Being lucky is always good. I very much recommend that. We get another two skill, or sorry, skill point here from Lani. Pick up the boots. Um, honestly, they're pretty good. Lots of life on them. See if we can get two blues on them. We can. We're going to switch those out. Other than that, pretty much the same as mine. Um, a fire res on the belt. And open suffix so we can keep that too. So we just got a bunch of different upgrades. Let's go over those and why they are good. So right now, and like what we're looking for. So right now, if I hold alt here, you can see that it has an open prefix and an open suffix, right? So I can craft fire or a lightning resist. Or, since it has 21 life, this is coupled with the energy shield and that makes it hybrid, so I can craft an additional 25 life here if I want to. Um, we don't have a way to use this right now because we need red sockets. We need at least one we could get away with. Um, but we could also save this for when I'm able to get maybe like a crazy glove but with red sockets, which we did have earlier I got rid of. Cluster duels, I'm not going to explain in this. It's not really important for most people watching this. Um, this was quite good, however. We are going to, and we have an extra green socket there. Ah! Uh, if I can get a jeweler. Honestly, I could buy a jeweler. Let's do that. Let's show how we fix socket issues, and then we go back to the hideout and enchant things. So I'm going to buy one single jeweler for two alterations, and obviously I don't have a lot of alterations right now. There's such a high chance to give three sockets, and it'll at least give us two. And then I'm really wanting at least one red socket here. We got at least one red socket. That makes it a lot easier to switch to things. We can put the desecrate in the chest. So that's sort of how I'm thinking about things like that. 
Um, these are our old boots. This is our new belt. Now we look at my resist. I'm like, do I have any holes I need to plug up now? We do. We need the cold res. We can craft a higher one now. It does cost an alchemy, um, but uh, we can craft a higher one. Now we have a lot too much lightning rest right now, but we do have an open on our boots so we can craft additional cold res here. And this is why you want so many transmutes. We're going to go back to town. We're going to vendor our old gear for some alterations. We obviously don't need to keep that. If you're playing hardcore, keeping hand-me-downs is not a bad idea. Also, interesting thing, this works even for the normal tabs. I could have this or maybe the fourth one as my currency tab. Um, and then if I click this, it'll go directly there without me doing anything. Um, there's some neat things there. Okay. So we've got the skill point. We got the quest item. Wait, did we do the ossuary? I did, right? No, I didn't. Let's go here. Okay, we guys are the newbie. So what you're watching right now is one of the best things you can watch as a new player. This will be on YouTube. It's basically, and I have several other builds with this, but I do a between a five to nine hour playthrough and I explain the entire game as if the person watching is a completely new player. Now, obviously I have played 25,000 hours. So when you play the game that much, there will be things you take for granted, but I generally get a lot of feedback each episode and hopefully I remember a few different things each time. Uh, and you sort of play along to this. Like, it's not something you watch and then you're like, oh, cool, I know what to do now. You, like, play this as you watch. Or watch this as you play. So, we got the quest item we needed here. Crafting recipe for physical damage that we don't really need. Um, Let's see. And then we're going to go back to Rune Square. I am going to make a new zone. So, I really want to hit a level up before I kill Katava. Do you have Bone Shatter playthrough? I don't, and Bone Shatter is not in a super good state this league. Even Karn is not playing it. Playing says, as I'm watching my character himself, noted. Now, I really do want that level up, but at least it won't be a big deal. I'm going to be 6% rest under cap. So we are about to lose 30% rest. What niche exceptions to rules to skip over for new players? What do you mean? Oh, I, I don't mention any end game exceptions. It's just, there's so many things I purposefully misexplain because explaining something that only happens at the end game of Path of Exile is just going to confuse a new player. It's really important to lie to new players. Something, something that a lot of people that do teaching content get caught up in doing is explaining something that's not even 10 hours away, but that is 100 hours away as a rare exception just to be technically correct. So it's so important to lie to new players because it's already such an overwhelming game. So going like, well, actually, is very important to not do. Is Zizarin the Mr. Llama or Woody Joe of PoE? Zizarin is the Zizarin of PoE. I don't know what content creator I'd be similar to. I'm just me. I always want to be the first Zizarin. Not someone else. Alright, this is very dangerous. This is a scary fight. That will basically do well, loads of small hits, so it'll do loads of damage. I am now in the next phase not going to do damage, or I'm actually instead going to do damage with Armageddon Brand, just so we do the fight a little bit slower. Um, just so you can show what to dodge and stuff. I can actually get one shot here. We don't have that much HP. 1.4k with some energy shield. This thing, I'm going to stand still and let it hit me. And then what can happen is you get hit by that and the slam afterwards. That slam can easily take you out. Look at this damage. Okay, I dodged it. That was lucky. So that can very easily one-shot you. We are a very decent build, 
but again, very scary. So try to dodge out of those. Try to stay close to him. If you're too far away, it can be really, really hard to see a lot of the things that he does. Uh, and Act 5 Katava is actually the most dangerous fight during the campaign. You do have to fight him a second time in Act 10, spoiler alert. Um, however, he loses his slam in that fight, so there's very little that can kill you. And especially since there's so much red, GGD really went like fuck colorblind people with this fight. Um, that it can be really hard to see, even if you're not colorblind. Um, the red thing, when there's other red things um, floating about, like, it's very difficult to see things because of this big dot. Like now, you see what I mean? And then I have a slam happening at the same time. It's very easy. Um, the minions he summoned as well does actually slam. So now we're gonna look, we are about to lose 30% all risk. So you can over prepare for this. You need 105 risk to not be underkept. It's never gonna change. It's not sometimes 20, sometimes 40. What shouldn't you pick up? So, you might have noticed I'm not picking up like two-handed weapons and stuff like that. I'm mostly not picking up armor gear. Um, like armor gloves and stuff like that because I'm I'm not interested in red sockets for the most part. I'll maybe care a little bit about armor gloves now because we find that neat helmet. So I wouldn't mind switching. Um, now we are going to do something called Lily. And doing Lily is great because she gives you access to every single gem without any class restriction. And... Doing this once gives you access to this on every other character for the rest of the league. So you really, especially on hardcore, this is so nice. And you only have to do it once, the entire league. Um, you can do Lily multiple times if you want uh, more respec points. So if I hold P or click P right now, you can see that I have six refund points. And I'm about to get an additional two. You do get, two, I, I don't know, do we, do we get 22? 20? I, I don't actually know how many respec we get. That's heist. I'm not going to explain that. Should be called almost everything explained. It's not as catchy, is it? Quite a lot of Path of Exile explained by Zizrune. Heist is one of the endgame league mechanics. Basically like... You go steal shit. You become a thief. Oh! He hurted me. So we do need to full clear this zone. That is what the quest is. Even though obviously we don't know what the quest is. We haven't talked to anyone. So much of people is understanding what you don't need to understand. Yeah. Ah. Three monsters remaining. Ah. Lovely. Lovely. Hey there. We go. Uh, uh, let's see. Now, Lily's down there. I don't need to talk to her right now. I don't think I need to talk to anyone right now while I can sell stuff. But Lily will pop up. Uh, once you enter the second or third zone in this area, she'll pop up over there. So you don't have to run all the way down. And waste time to talk to her there. Weeping Essence of Fear. It's good. Fear Essences are quite important for this build, although not at this point. I remember at what point we actually take the node that makes that important. If it's in the next kill tree, I haven't looked ahead because I'm not going to play this build at least start. Just now. And hopefully, like, getting used to just like throwing down your armor again, run all over. Remember, you can have three up dealing damage in different locations. And if two are next to each other and different monsters, they will be overlapping and dealing multiple damage. You see that I'm skipping a lot of side areas. Most of the side area quests are useless things. Sometimes it's respec points. Sometimes it's like a rare belt, like the one we're next to right now. Uh, but it's not stuff worth doing. Here we have another rogue exile. I will always kill rogue exiles. They can drop unique. They can drop a bunch of stuff. I see that we have crazy damage right now. There's no wonder so many people are going to be playing this at least or... This is a little bit of a scary mini boss going up. She has like an artillery strike that just does crack damage. 
I've died to it. I don't very often die while leveling, but I have died to that. Once? Maybe twice? It's scary. Uh, we don't have that many crumbs. I do want to be a little bit more careful about picking up crumbs, especially like the smaller items is really nice, obviously. We have a jeweler box. Got three rare monsters on it. Essence of Torment. You see that we're starting to kill a lot of monsters. We're starting to drop a lot of stuff. Got the essence. We got a gold ring. as has rarity on it. That rarity is not particularly of interest to us. Not bad. Like if it's an extra stat on something, like it is nice. I do appreciate rarity. But it's not something I'm going to go out of my way, way to try to get. Um... And you do try to kill most things, but you also don't want to like go out of your way to like full clear zones. But if you're getting lost, it's always good to level. So nice with this build that you get to really set up everything. There, you have to kill all the pillars. It's a big slam. Generally, if it's slow and has a wind-up, it's gonna kill you. Here's another crafting recipe. And now that we've killed two Kohama, we are actually going to get our a skill point from that. And we're going to get our first Pantheon. Which I'm not going to show until we clear this act. But we do have one now. Haven't tried Unleashed Firestorm. Does this one have a PoE lore video? No, but I very recently, which will be up on YouTube, hopefully soon, whenever we can, uh, I did a interview with a other Twitch streamer called Kitten Cat Noodle, and she does great lore videos. Um, so we did a video talking about different aspects of the lore, some of my favorite lore, some of her favorite lore. Um, I try to do a lot of collabs to introduce my audience to other content creators. I have a lot of videos like that, doing interviews with other content creators. Getting currency again from Delirium, very lucky. We're just running through, we do have enough damage to deal with it. The lore of Path of Exile is quite cool, but it is very badly portrayed, so her lore videos are a very good way to find out the lore. It is unironically very good. No, I do not use Brand Recall. No point after they changed to nerfed it a bit. I'm gonna tell new players to use Blood Rage. This is strictly for new players. That sounds awful. What are you Lee starting? Explosive Iron. Doing a podcast with Quinn69 tomorrow. When are clusters worth looking at? Honestly, when you have a good enough cluster, they're always worth it, pretty much. Especially if a build has to travel a lot to get damage points or tank points. Depends what you need. Depends what you need. That is a very cool div card. There is a decent chance you get one of these, but this div card uh, is farmable in any prison type layout. Um, so if you go to jail, you have a chance to get a six link. Chain step bind, Dave card, very nice. Oh, what the? What a weird layout. Uh, I do, I do need the trial. So let's go back to the left. Usually they're next to each other. Why aren't cluster jewels worth it for a first timer? Too advanced crafting, too much to look up. Either the guide tells you to use them and you buy them, but we're not gonna explain them right now. What the? Oh, it's down here. They are. Complicated. The wand. Have I still not found a chance orb? Isn't that insane? What the? How? That's wild. It's a very min maxing. Not, not useful for new players. It's just like, you kind of have to pick your battles with Path of Exile. Because if I was going to make a video explaining everything in Path of Exile, it would be a few hundred hours. Probably more. 
Maybe just under a thousand? So you really gotta pick your battles. Yeah, you can't craft them at this point anyway. Like you wouldn't use one at this point. And this is more like, this is an early game guy. This is like teaching somebody what Path of Exile is and hopefully they'll enjoy it. Oh! Belief is the strong Believe sucks. Oops. All right. You can't Irish. You're not going to find two items with the same name. Can I see your PoE client settings? Um. Oh my god, I knew I forgot something. I knew I forgot something. Thank you. Oh my god, I should have explained that earlier. I, and I should have showed these at the start anyway. So this is what I'm running. So sorry for not showing these before. There's only one really important thing I run the show. You can have off quest tracking. Um, show clock is nice. Uh, landscape transparency to the left and map transparency to the right. Ah, oh, I usually show that at the start. I also have a pink mouse. That's all in the UI part there. I'll show that as well. Ugh, I feel so stupid. kind of want to do it over again now. Yeah, right here. And then uh, another thing you could fuck up the uh, as a new player is... Um, let's say right now, if I drop this, it shows. But if I click Z, it's hidden. So you might have Z clicked if you're not finding any loot. Can't edit these. They're too long. They are too long to edit. That's why we can never take out breaks or anything out of these, because it takes my editor's PC like 20 hours to render. Because we do like so high quality videos. Um, so like rendering something that's 9 hours, but takes so long. And most of the time it crashes during. And we don't want to split them up. Sounds like he needs a Star Forge. He probably could benefit a lot from a Star Forge. Do you want to buy my editor a PC Star Forge systems? Hashtag ad. That would be sick. He would love that. By the way, that PC in your pin is sold out. Wait, am I selling out loads of PCs? Am I a sellout? Pulse check? Do you have another pin message you want? Yes? Just... Just post it in chat. Yeah, we'll pin it. Alright. Do you want rock hard performance? Get Starforge today. Our love is a dick. It's all good. Alright, this boss, while it does die very quickly, it actually doesn't always, it's just we have so much damage. Pen 69 carries me in PoE. Okay, I don't like you anymore. Never playing Tarka with you again. Pen doesn't even play Tarka with you. Alright. Now, in this zone, it is similar to the last one where you do get the Prisoner's Gate Waypoint um, like we do with the Brutus fight the first time, but you do actually need a recipe here for spell damage. Not a bad idea to pick up. Now, we're going to go back to town. We're going to vendor loads of things. Lily now gives us our two respect points. We can sell everything here. Uh, no, I didn't have anything from Bestel. Talk to Tarkley. Uh, probably the two red, two blue. Eh, kind of trash. Stay sharp. Could use chaos orbs on it, but you generally want to save chaos orbs. Maybe up here. Exclamation mark DD. This is just a throwaway account I made. Just for this. I just like doing a completely new player experience with no MTX or anything on it. Uh, 
Nice. Phone problems? Can you pin that, Chronix? No, I'm not playing DD. I'm just doing this to like teach people. Yeah, I can pin it. Pin this message. Manually unpinned or end of stream. Okay, I think I did it. Did I? Did I do it? Hashtag end. Ah, I'm tired, it's 3 a.m. Can I have that account after? No, that would be account sharing, which is illegal. Which would have ramification for my main account. Sorry. <laughs> Darth has a Starforge PC logo as an emote. That's amazing. Do you know, if you buy my editor a Starforge PC, I'll give you an emote slot. That's a fair trade. That's a fair trade. I like it. Good promotion too. Like for like a year. Give it for at least a year. Or even better, a year or as long as I'm with Starforge. Haha. Uh -huh. If you do a subathon like Darth, that was his deal. Well, he probably had one to give away. I just want one to my editor specifically. That's different. Um, he has a lot of Star Force to his editor. Star Force is great. And no problem so far. Chuck gets one and you. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we should look at that. Shit, but then my wife needs a new PC. No, actually, I'm just gonna buy a new motherboard for that. Cause I have, I had like a pretty uh, decent PC that I gave to my wife, but the um, the motherboard died. I have to buy a new motherboard. That was our Titian PC. Both of mine died. They were really good until they died. Both of them died within a, two weeks of each other. Very unhappy with that. You can sneak logos into the videos. One and Jeffrey subathon. Well, we were thinking about doing a subathon with me and my wife this league start, but it's just too much going on. Let's see. Making extra money for the upcoming baby is nice. Expecting our little baby girl in May. 15th of May? That's the eviction date, I think. Speech and barter maxed out. It's <laughs> funny. Alright. We are getting to the point where hopefully you're noticing that it's less top heavy on the information. It's more about progressing, progressing and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, her middle name is Anna. Number two already. Yeah, we don't really want a kid now, but we want to get it over with, if that makes sense, because we don't want a large gap between them. So it was planned. It wasn't an accident, um, but it's like it's going to be it's going to be hell for two or three years. But we want we, we want a small gap between them. We don't want a large gap. Like, there's 12 years between me and my brother. I wish you were my dad. You don't want a baby in 10 year old? Yeah. Yeah, we have a four-link chest. You were planned but unwanted. No, no, it is wanted. She is wanted. I'm trying to compete with the breeding god. I don't think I'm going to have as many kids as Quinn. I won at least two. I'd be open to three. I would also consider rescuing a third. So there's a lot of kids that don't have anywhere. But I wanted to like grow two of my own. Crow? Mm -hmm. 
Isn't that why you got steel mage? True. I guess adopt another. So, you have to kill those three unique things and then you kill the boss. This is usually why I've been thinking like, these don't necessarily need to go to Act 10. But yeah, I really want to show the swap. As a weird common to airport is. Divine farm for future leagues. Yeah, Queen has a lot of kids. There. Adopt me, I need citizenship. Let's see, let's continue. Go through there. Is there any videos you'd recommend to help me get help or get level as get level up as I have looked and I can't find any in the last six months? Yeah, search for Zizarin, everything explained. The last one I have is Explosive Arrow and the one I'm making right now. Oh, don't do the summoned raging spirits one. Um that one's outdated and bad. But um this one that I'm making right now will be up tomorrow and is well obviously very relevant seeing as I'm making it right now. Oh, we gotta find a bridge across here. So right now the way this works is that we're in Act 6, but it is um, Act 2, but you're in different places of Act 2. Oops, dead end. Just watch the Wad Dan house, and that's the point of this. It's to be a YouTube video, so it's explained throughout. Why does it, uh, why does, oh, why aren't gems automatic? Um, so, Granny Gear Games are also very large shareholders of a lot of hospitals that specialize in arm injuries. So they try to inflict as many arm injuries and RSI and stuff as possible. Um, so that they can, uh, have, have a good investment there. That's why they, they, they focus hard on having a lot of clicks. It's also like, they have made it easier for console, and that's mostly out of pity, because like, if you play on console, your life is probably terrible, right? Like, you don't have a mouse and keyboard. What would that be like? Ugh. Now we encounter Expedition for the first time. Is quite a rewarding league mechanic. The way it works is, you basically get to explode things, now, huh? Oh. Well, I guess I have that on a different hockey. Uh, but anyway, early on, you can focus on, like, you can see, it's pretty clear, right? It buffs the monsters. Uh, some of them are very deadly, especially Overwhelm. Um, but it also, yeah. And you, you want to do those earlier. Like, this last thing will not affect the chest that I'm uh, opening now. And then you get something like reroll currency for the shops they have. And you get currency to buy stuff off them. So now I can like talk to her and try to buy stuff. I could buy jewel, I could buy a scepter, um, I could reroll, and then I can buy a wand, and boom, it is not the worst, but it is not good enough to use. By shield and boom, I'll it is again yeah, pretty mid, pretty aggressively mediocre. Yeah, you can't sell the currency, either use it or lose it. Here is a red beast that is a crab, but it is not the crab we want. That just keeps like crumbs or jewelers. It's not a very good one, so I don't care about killing it. And the one reward I have already. Gives eight stack of crumbs. This is okay early. His time has almost See, we are gonna go to town now just because my inventory is full. We can also now consider uh, banking some stuff. Early on, I like having a lot of currency on me because I will be buying a lot of things from the vendor, etc. At least I picked up a white onyx amulet by accident here. Now, actually, a neat tip. If you have a very bad amulet, you can buy a red, a green, and a blue gem, and then go buy any amulet. Doesn't matter which one. And then first, I'm going to throw, let's say, a essence on it. And I was like, wow, that's awful. 
Now I'm going to sell this with a red, a green, and a blue gem of any level so they can be the ones that cost one wisdom and it makes it an Onyx Amulet once again. I can try again and I can keep doing this for three wisdoms per try until something like an alchemy or an essence ends up hitting something that is really good. So obviously this is quite lucrative. Normally you would have to use something called a scouring and we don't even have one yet. So obviously they're quite rare. Wait, I was supposed to be leveling that. So, I'm just banking everything for now. Right, we have now filled out the skill tree that says Cruel Lab. We are now going to go Merc Lab. Now we are going to pick up a really interesting node called Spiritual Aid. Increases and reductions to minion damage also affect you. And that fear essence I talked about earlier, what that does is it guarantees 30 to 39 minion damage on a weapon. Now why is this interesting? That means that this, when we have spiritual aid, that'll be the same as if it said increased damage. So it'll be the same as fire damage, elemental damage. Um, so it's really, really strong. It's just generic increased damage. So this is better than spell damage. It'll affect everything. Unique that we're not going to use. There are a lot of different uniques in the game. A lot of them are very useful, especially early. A lot of them are very niche. Usually there is a reason for most of them existing. There, just killed some random monsters. We're going to try to find the next zone. Okay, this looks like it should be up and to the right, but it is actually down. It's a bit of a bait layout. You'll remember after you run it the wrong way ten times. Ah, let's see. Return my investment since I buy this garbage game. The game is free. You can't buy it. Calm down. Weird comment. Alright. We're now gonna walk towards the boss of this act. Branking. We're a few acts away. <laughs> Lost learn. But yeah. There, we're gonna pick up the ambush mitts. Would be hard for us to swap right now. So, this is why part of the reason why they're like getting rid of gem sockets in PoE 2. Because it is a lot harder to upgrade. You need to get the, the links, the colors, everything. Thanks, Detroit. And Rocker. Appreciate it. Yeah, and everything is great for starting filters. Uh, we will be able to do Cruel Lab soon. And honestly, what I might do is I might swap to the Detonate Dead of Chaining at Cruel Lab. Now, normally, you would not swap until maps. Because it is worse. Um, until later. It is definitely worse until later. But I kind of want to swap early just to show the swap. And there's not that much interesting stuff that really happens later in the playthrough. Most of it is like a very top end playthrough. Hey, monster, thanks. Did you pre-farm a chaining? No, so instead of wasting time, because I don't want uh, the video to be very long, because obviously it could be anywhere between 10 and 30 labs. Um, so I asked somebody to give me one, because we're on standard. Just to save some time in the VOD. Bumbling, thank you for the five gifted. Let's see. There you can see that like lack of regen really, really being annoying. No. Back to the lab. Yeah, it can take a lot. 
A level 100 dying seems bad. So that guy didn't actually just die. That guy got his character deleted. It's an end game fun mechanic for very rewarding maps. That happens on softcore too. So we are in softcore right now, but that guy lost his character. Can't even log into it anymore. What times do you usually stream? At least or just all the time? I will just be live. I'll be live roughly 20 to 30 hours at lunch, and I'll sleep four hours, and then I'll be back. So feel free to tune in anytime, at least, right? What are we farming lab? Detonate dead of chaining for this build. Alright. This is a pretty boring area. But it is done now. We can click the ignition switch, we can click the bacon, and then boom! We can flame dash down here to save some time. Just RNG. Um there. And we're gonna run. This is a bit of an annoying zone as well. A few annoying layouts. And a few scary monsters. So there are obviously a lot of different monster types you encountered early, like the Roa, which is quite dangerous because it charges you. Not so dangerous at the end game, thankfully. But um, the Golem, that one, in here, is actually quite dangerous, especially at the end game. It has a very large physical damage hit. Let's see. Right now we're just going towards the Brain King. You see the gem, even though I started leveling in late, it is catching up pretty quickly. We'll be a little under leveled though. Ah. I was about to say, is there a Vile side area here? So Vile side areas do screw the layouts, which is annoying. Right, it's done then. All right, let's see. There. Is it up there? It does look very dead endy. I'm not sure. Well, side areas really screw with the layout. Can never find the bus in this zone first try. Yeah, it's because when it does open up into that large area, it feels like you're on the right path. But it's then the zone right below, which is kind of annoying. Right, this is a pretty tanky boss with multiple phases. And put down a portal as well. Fine example of womanhood. I simply knew you wouldn't disappoint me. Or my husband. You see, his majesty could never be blah blah blah. Blah blah. Blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Blah. There we go. And then as you can see our damage is still insane. The Brian King is no trouble. Loads of ads that give us flasks. You want to avoid those. Now there is a trick where you can go back to town and go back down. And you can even put a new portal down. And you're actually safe while putting a new portal down. So you have a one minute grace period. And he will actually continue doing his attack. So you can skip that entire phase if you want to. Like if you're uncomfortable or feel overwhelmed by do do dodging the uh, lightning circles on the ground. There we go. And again, it's so nice that each time he does this, we do get to like pre-fire our cremations, set up our firewall, and get everything ready. So that does help a little bit with our damage as well. And we have the shield. We will want to shield later. Especially the um, evasion ones, because they can have suppression. 
It's so either armor evasion or evasion energy shield. So there are certain things that can only roll on certain bases. But we'll have more on that later. Right. We're gonna move the broken bridge. Is there a major downside of being over leveled? If you're 10 levels over the zone level, you will no longer be encountering league mechanics. That's very unlikely to happen. But no, other than that, no. So the quest in this zone that gives you a potion, they'll be in a fort somewhere. It'll always be near the road. It's usually quite easy to find just by doing what I did. Then it's in the corner. Let's see. Boom. So right now, these points aren't doing anything. But once we get spiritual aid, we'll get a big damage boost. Which is nice. And we do have higher ignite chance now. We have 35%. Or if we have ability, something 55%. So not a massive XP loss for being a, a super overleveled. Yeah. But that's not super important. It can be 8 levels over. Is what I recommend for her core. Now we have so much damage. That our Armageddon run is doing a lot. And we're about to gain a lot more damage. So this is why the build is so wildly popular. And so many people will be like starting it. And we're now just one-shotting everything with Armageddon run. It doesn't even get to stand up. We just throw them behind us. And just watch everything die. How far can you take armor run in maps? Yellows. And you do still need cremation for single target. I've done it to yellows quite a lot just because I love the one button playstyle of Armageddon Run, but it is trash, like, on damage. Like, that is the... Like, it's okay during the campaign because the campaign's balanced in such a way that it's supposed to be quite easy. Here's a Remnant of Corruption, so that's a special essence, and you use it on another essence monster, and it'll either upgrade or change or release the um, essence monsters. Um, aren't our belts quite trash? We can just throw a random essence on it. This is Detonate Dead, one of the most deadly things in the game. It'll always kill you if you get hit by it. Or at least very often. Boom. No. Did he get life and cold rest, but... DD not getting nerfed is crazy. Do you think it'll be the main meta? It'll be most people's league starter. So the the league starter meta, what people choose as their first build, that's been quite stale for quite a while. But that's also the least important part because they've been really good that there are so many different builds to play in the mid game, as well as some like familiar builds that people really like. Like the last like six leagues or something, or four leagues at least, there's been really different interesting builds that you can play that haven't existed before. And that's generally what you want and that's what they should focus on. I would love if things were rotated a little bit more often, but league starters being similar, that is just your day one to three stuff, so. It's not a crisis in my opinion. That's how I look at it. You would never make a loot specific build in Path of Exile because there's no smart loot at all. So you're going to find so many good things for other builds and you don't want to miss that. All right, so now we're going here to the crypt. We want, um, oh, we want two things. I want one thing's upstairs. There's a trial upstairs. There's a few scissor in sand packs on everything. Who stacked up on energy drinks? I don't drink carbonated drinks anymore because my stomach health issues. I might have one Red Bull on day one, but that would be it. Most likely not. We'll see. Depends how tired I get after 20 hours. It's going to be potent because I haven't had caffeine in months. I don't drink coffee. It's disgusting. Do -do -do. I started with DD Knight, only so far that goes. Well, no, DD kills everything in the game, including a Bruce. Doesn't doesn't only go so far. Does everything. That's why most streamers are starting it. I'm not. I'm going EA. 
Good old trusty EA. All right, we got the map that we need. We're gonna go to town. I'm gonna take a quick toilet break. EA does everything as well. Yeah, not as strong as DD though. Bear bite. Enjoy some ads. Feel free to skip on YouTube. All right, we got Armageddon run level up. Very nice. Let's see, we have a quest down here that gives us a potion. If you don't have one at this point, I would go with a quartz flask. Might be scary to not have multiple life flasks, but with one instant, that's enough. Um, oh my god, they all rolled terribly. Oh, that's bad. Do I have no alterations left? Oh, I have 10. Brother. So that's the worst fast bond, the less duration. I mean, this one's okay at least. So I'm going to start using one life less now. Um, you can try it and see if you like it. It might be hard as a new player, um, but I do want to show off the quartz flask and why that is very good. Go with courage. Uh, if you're completely new, consider looking at my Everything Explained series. Or at least pick a bell guide. That's all you need really. Depends how much handholding you want. Right, so now with the facing flask, you can see that my character is kind of transparent and I can run through things. This is very strong. You can see most things are just missing me now. So I can run face first into packs and feel completely safe. And when you're at Path of Exile's endgame maps, you will be killing so many monsters that this is permanent uptime. Permanent uptime. It's also part of the reason of why I rebound the Q to spacebar uh, and uh, start using spacebar as my movement ability or mouse button 5 is that I found it was like, a little bit weird to press Q and 2, 3, 4, 5 and 1 sometimes. Um, now there are some systems in the game where you can automate fast usage. Uh, but they're like a bit of an end game feature. Oops, we don't need that. We're not going to bother with heist. Owie. Yep, this is a YouTube video. Well, I mean, I'm live now, but it will be a YouTube video. When I upload it to YouTube. 
Yeah, avoid Scion as a new player. Scion's not a good starter. Scion's like a very expensive class for min max. Alright. A little bit of a dangerous zone. A lot of things that are like quite like snappy to attack you. And there's just a lot of bleeds. But with the instant life recovery, you're pretty okay. Look how fast even the exiles are dying. Like, our Armageddon run is actually dealing so much damage right now. It's insane how much damage this build does. And we technically don't even have an Ascendancy right now. Because this, like, really doesn't, like... Ah, I guess we do. We're doing a 10% more damage if there's a corpse nearby. But it, like, it does just quite little compared to what it will later. You can see that our damage is kinda cracked. Everything is just getting absolutely shredded. Do be careful for that, like, purple attack. That's the main one that can kill you. Everything else is pretty weak. He is dead. Very, very dead. And you got a portal out. This is technically your first map. There. We are one more point away from spiritual aid. And I'll show how much our damage goes up by. Although in-game tooltips aren't super accurate in this game. You can now drop maps. That's true. You can now start dropping Path of Exiles endgame. They're quite rare this early, and by the time you're in Act 9, you probably have one or two. Like, even the rares are getting shredded now. And the uniques. So nice. Here's another trial. So after we do this one, we can actually ascend and get our Crow Lab. And honestly, I might try switching to DD now to see if it's bad or good. I just want to... Honestly, I've never swapped this early. I always swap in maps. But I want to see just so that people can learn from it. Worst case scenario, we switch back. Complete the labyrinth. So we'll do the lab and then I'm going to try switching. I could even end the LOD earlier instead of going all the way. If it's okay, and I can actually explain. No, this is tough, bro. There's no reason to do this on hardcore. I will be hardcore on League Launch, though. But this is just a um, tutorial video. I'm not playing for enjoyment. Um, Enduring Cry on Autocast Life. All right. We're about to gain a shitload of damage once we level up. <laughs> You're not enjoying this? Hey, I could be playing Tarko right now. I'm so close to Kappa. All right. I'm doing this to teach. I'll be enjoying League Start. Not playing on Standard. Trust me. <laughs> this is just to teach. I'm like, I just need an evasion arm man now. And a lead X for crisis. We'll run through that. Harbinger rewards. They're more like map centric. Um, of an endgame mechanic. They have like drops that can modify maps. Ow. Owie. Don't you already have a hundred videos of the same video you're making now? Uh, I have five. And they're different builds, and obviously the old ones are out of date. Right? Because they were for different patches, so they're not worth watching anymore. So I have to make a new one of these every league. Like, for example, even the one I did last league is completely redundant now. The Summon Raging Spirits one. The one I did two leagues ago for Explosive Art was still fine, so I've been recommending that as well. 
But I do a different build each time. Like, it's actually, yeah, it is a really nice thing. Um, it is a really nice thing as a video creator. You can remake the majority of your videos every three to four months. And there's a great reason to do that because so many things change. So it's very easy free content that you can just recycle without too much change. Like you do just have to re-record a 10 to 30 minute video. That's stuff you learn better and better each time. Nothing. I've never played with this. No idea. Right. Boom. Okay. Uh, so you can see right now that our average damage is 3,300 there and 2,400 damage there. Just by this one node, it went up to 2,800 and 3,900. So quite a chunk. And we don't even have any large amounts of minion damage anywhere. another boss that like lets you pre-set up things before he comes down which is nice you have to be careful for that rain right Andrews what's your played right now so these are a lot slower than normal four hours so normally I would be in a 10 by now but uh we have to explain things explain you can see our damage now is kind of cooked even blue packs are dead to one armor band. We don't have to wait around. It slams like maybe twice to kill. Honestly, one is fine because um because of the ignite. Well, we don't always ignite. Depends what the new builds are in the league. But there'll be a lot of interesting things. A lot of people will play Arc Mage this league. Uh, we can grab this. This is a fear essence. We want those. Even essences are starting to die very quickly now. And hopefully for the people playing along, even when you're a new player, you should at this point feel quite powerful. And this is something people can come and ask questions and we can help people. If I'm busy, like other people in chat will be able to help. It's a very easy build to fix. You should feel powerful no matter what on this. How? Boom. Wow! Plus one fire, but... There's nothing else on it. Hmm. Hmm. Is that good enough? It might be. We can check. Nice stuffing. Very late to get a plus one fire. It might not be worth it without any flat. Something dropped somewhere. But where? I guess my ignite killed something somewhere. What? I'm so confused. Is it up here? I mean, it must be. Is that a chaos aura that does that sound? Wait. Oh, was it just a quest item sound? Am I dumb? I don't know how that happened. I'm tired. It's 3.30. It's 3.30. This one. Oh, that's scary. Ah. Another recipe here. So once you got all seven fireflies, you can return to Yenna. And again, I just want to point out we have never accepted this quest. We're just doing it. We're just doing it. Book of skill here. Another book of skill. And then I think we get another book here. Uh, let's see. And uh, we are actually going to get even more damage. We're going to get some AoE here. Which also gets us damage, but we're going to get Divine Judgment next for a large damage boost. Try crafting flat on that one. No, I would do percentage fire because flat wouldn't um, increase the ignite. But 
I mean, it should be better than this one. Because that was cold. It should be. But I need the links, don't I? What's on this? Flame Bowl, Arcane... Mm. I don't care about Arcane Surge enough to keep it. Oh, nice. We have the higher fire damage craft now. Oh, but we basically got the same amount. Uh, we can look. So 4,000 to 4,200. It's a, it's a bit of a buff. It's a bit of a buff. Well, if I lose Arcane Surge, it's a little annoying. Eh. Do I have a Jeweler? I don't, and I don't have, really have enough alts. Whatever. Arcane Surge gone. It's just our hit anyway that suffers, not our actual Ignite. There. Yeah, this is a really good boss healer. So, I run an event for Path of Exile called The Gauntlet. Um, and um, we actually end up banning this skill. Because it's too strong in the last few events. Um, and that's like a forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 price pulled event. It's hardcore with everything turned up to crazy difficulty. So it's like 10, 20 times harder than the normal game. So DD's created all content. It's just slow to do specific strats is all. That's not true. It's the one of the fastest builds. It usually wins the level 100 race as well. That's why a lot of people want it nerfed because it is good at everything with no downside. So that that's why so many content creators are playing it because they feel stupid not to. So I'm referring to like Legion and Breach. It's great at those. I mean, Lightning Arrow can maybe be better at Legion, but you don't have a problem full clearing a Legion on, on DD. Uh, the Pilfering Ring will probably go into the shop like a few weeks after launch. But yeah, you can easily full clear a Legion with uh, DD. Uh, the Gauntlet is a 10 day race. We put up a forty to fifty thousand dollar price pool through sponsors and myself and shit like that and Shopify. And then uh, it's a hardcore ten day event. Last time me and Steel Mage casted it. It's a lot of fun, and it's like you have to kill all the Ubers on hardcore solo self fun fresh start with crazy difficulty mods. Here's another quest item that gives you a skill point. We are now uh, in the one of the worst zones in the game for a lot of people. But it is actually pretty readable. So it's always, usually, there's a few exceptions, uh, in a straight line. So if I just follow this up here now, I left here, and then I will take the first right here. Well, I guess it's the second right, because I could have taken it right there. But I can now take it right here. And here's the waypoint. But this is the easiest zone to get lost in. It does suck. It does suck. Right, we're now going to go Ascend. Now, I do only have one life last right now, so I'm going to grab a second one. Because I would rather have a second life last for lab than I would have... Um, a phasing flask. Yeah, gauntlets open to everyone. There's no entry fee. Yes, I thank you. There's an F. Don't need that quest item. Keep your life. Oh. There. Grab skill point here. Okay, there's no mastery we want. We just want damage. And then we ascend. Yeah, senior. We have a collab guide with Exile. It's on my YouTube. What's the next gauntlet? Next thing. We're going to do it twice a year. We had like a lot of fatigue with people, racers and streamers specifically, trying to play every single league and getting kind of burnt out. So now we're going to be doing it twice a league instead.
Tw twice a year, not twice a league. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have a scepter in case it's cracked. Nope. All right, Esperance Trial. So this is harder. It's a longer lab, and his R will be more dangerous. The traps will do a lot more damage, and the last area will be harder. Okay. You can see he has a shield and a sword that is more deadly than the previous mace. Very hard to die to the mace one. You were born for this. Now I am gonna try to swap after this. We are gonna try to swap. Probably gonna be harder to swap early. I'm sure we can figure something out. Let's see. Nope, dead end. You can click on that little thing and it'll show you where you're about to go. There's a dark shrine in there. Anytime there's like a secret passage like that, there's usually a dark shrine. They can give different rewards. Buffs. Cool stuff. This is not a dead end. EA's bait. Don't start it. I don't feel like you're allowed to say that when I've killed all the Ubers three times on Soul Self on Hardcore with EA. I don't feel like you're allowed to call it a bait build. It's not as strong as DD, but it is one of the strongest starters. <laughs> when the time comes to strike. Toxic Rain got nerfed quite hard by the Mana Flask. Let's SS. You have, if you aren't this or somebody has tons of experience for crafting pieces for it, it's really rough. So, but I get so much feedback from people playing the first league and they were able to get all four watchstones on their first time playing the game because they played Exposure Arrow. Like you could always have a bad time, but if you come by my chat and ask for help, there's no problem we can't fix on this build. Like it's easier than most builds. Like there's so many people that'll vouch for EA. Not everybody enjoys the playstyle, of course. Like, it is a totem delayed playstyle. But we've had more positive feedback on Explosive Arrow than any other build. This guy is a flat fire damage crafter. Well, I mean, that's the thing. We can't literally help anyone with any problem. It's a build that should never feel rough. We can help with literally anything. There's no problem we can't fix on that build for people. At all. You have the best support group for EA you could ever get. Did you guys like what I did on the EA guide this time with like showing off how Pierce looks and stuff? DD is definitely stronger. Oh, look at that wind slash. Very scary. Alright, let's get us some treasure keys. Now, I am gonna try to swap. I have no idea how this will go. There's a reason we say we should swap in maps. That might be rough. But we have this. 
We just don't we don't have offerings on myself. Well that's fine, right? Surely. Oh. Um just in case we would have done it. Okay, we would not. We would not. So we're cheating. We're using a <coughs> unlawful detonated. Unlawful detonated. All right. Right. Level seventy DD respec. I don't think I have enough points to switch. The problem is that I need EB. Like, I really need EB, because it's, uh, it's so mana intensive. I'll try, though. Let's try. Oh, I'm supposed to have energy shield leech, too, and EB. I really don't think we can swap until I get Eldritch Battery. It's a rough one. Hey, Sherry. All right, I will get some more skill points, and I think we ditch this left side and start moving. So we need to start getting ready for the swap, and then we'll gain a decent amount of points. And as soon as I can get Eldritch Battery, I will try swapping. That is what we need. I don't think we need anything else. As soon as we have EB, uh, and what that does is it switches my energy shield um, to be on my mana instead, and it lets me use my energy shield as mana, and it's always like recovering, and I can use energy shield leech. It's a really cool mechanic. It's a great way to solve mana. Very cool way to solve mana. There's a few shenanigans and a few easy things to fuck up with this build, which is why I really want to make sure I cover it. Look at that damage though. It's also not like we need to swap right now. So I definitely do recommend swapping in maps. You'll be able to go back in the VOD and watch like, what did I do for the swap? Bomb is strong, but it's a lot of downsides. So we're now on Act 7. I just realized that I did not explain Pantheons. Coming up to another Pantheon boss, so I guess I'll explain it after our Kali. It's nice that I'm like at the point where I can just kite rares behind me and they die to Armageddon, right? Because we have so much damage. And technically, when you're following the guide, you'll have even more damage because you're getting the 50% damage node instead of doing the respec early. So they actually have an even easier time than what we're doing right now, which is nice. I do generally prefer that. Gotta wait for the cooldown recovery of Flame Dash. That is really my least favorite change by the Vexel did. Was lowering the cooldown recovery. Ow. So, the red bubbles around me is something called Corrupting Blood. It is similar to Bleed, but it is not Bleed. Um, it is physical damage taken over time. And, yeah, very scary damage. So, it's like whenever you hit something that has Corrupting Blood, you get infected by it. It bleeds on you, kind of, and infects you. It's very scary. Does a lot of damage. Oh, we, we could have phasing again. Ah, it's not bad to have multiple mana flasks. Oh, there. There, so this guy loves spiders. And yeah, my bride has arrived. He's really into spiders. 
Um, she rips his head off. You can actually see his head hanging on the spike there. Right there. So she just rips it clean off. That spider's a little bit too much. As you can see though, pretty crazy damage. The boss doesn't really get to do anything. Sin appears. Sucks her dry. We see some gear here. I'm probably not gonna bother picking up because it's armor gear and we don't really need that. Um, here we can see the Pantheon. So I'm going to take Brian King. You cannot be stunned. Um, and then I usually take Radikesh. This is that you don't take that damage over time bonus from bleeding. That you don't take that extra damage. Yes, so there is a few, but old ones. All right. I'm just gonna run through, get some more levels, and we are soon getting to the point where I usually end the everything explains anyway, unless I'm do. I have done a few really long ones where I've done into early maps, but they get really long. Um, but I actually usually end it in uh, the start of Act Nine because that is such a normal farming spot. Um, that we do end up spawning, um, sorry, rezoning over and over again in a zone called Blood Aqueduct and farming monsters there. Uh, that's very common. That might be a little bit rippier than normal, this thing, but we don't know yet. But that is definitely, I'm assuming it will be. Um, but we will try to swip over to DD as soon as I get the Eldritch Battery node. Maybe I'll try to get an energy shield. Shield? So that I can get a little bit more mana, because it does need a lot of mana. A lot of mana. That would just make life complicated. I'm making a new betrayal guide in this video, but yeah, we have a betrayal video. It's a little out of date on the reward, sadly. So we'll make a new one. I just changed to let this thing. Look how juicy it is now. Especially this one, you really do want to have that Quartz Flask on. Um, ow. Um, and now, another cool thing as well, those convenient ones just got a lot better because that increased damage is now the same as increased fire damage or elemental. So it's really nice. Very nice. But you cannot use things like more minion damage, so we can't use the minion damage support gem. And we can't use uh, plus one minion gem levels, stuff like that. It's not completely overpowering that node. What is this? Just damage the spells? Your interest have been fire this thing? I'm glad you like it. In this zone, we're going to be fighting Dodri once again, and it's not even for the last time. Very high density in this zone, kind of nice. Let's see, we need two more skill points. There, alright, there's Dodri. I'll just put down some volcanoes. Maybe she'll spawn here. Who knows? Sometimes over here. Ah. So, if you find this fight scary, you can click the valve in the middle of the arena, and that will remove the debuff. So, the fight is actually quite hard, and she does start either lowering your damage, uh, increasing her damage, or lowering your action speed by temp chains. Um, but if as soon as you click the valve, you do get a free few seconds of dealing damage where you're basically completely safe. Archmage does not work with orb.
but it works with ball lightning. Or maybe it was just the totem thing they did. It just doesn't work with ball lightning or static. It does work with normal ball lightning. That's steel mages league starter. Thank you, Hills. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. There we do have mesh gloves with two red, two blue. We'll throw that on it. Hmm. That is a lot of life. That would be pretty tempting. We did have that nice helmet to switch to. So now we actually might switch that out. We're going to pick up all of these shields because they can have a very nice amount of energy shield. Um, so that's what I'm actually looking for now. We'll potentially be okay with lowering my damage a little bit and get ready for that swap. Then we'll also use something like Essence Strain, or sorry, not Essence Strain, um, Shield Charge. Do you think you have to buy multiple Atlas Trees or is it for free? They never sell quality of life features except Slash Tubs. That's the only way they monetize. They never ever sell any quality of life stuff. The only thing that would be borderline is sometimes cosmetics can give you some advantage. Um, I guess it's a bit complicated to put a portal here. We'll just go. We don't need a portal here. Yeah, I'm getting red. Any high energy shield shields. 37's the highest one, that's sad. 39. Oh, no, yes. Not really any good shields. It's tragic. I have no idea how the second tree works. I'm guessing you start from scratch with the points and you just allocate them as you want. Looks like your first tier 16 unlocks the second tree. Maybe like first tier 17 map unlocks the third. Would be a good assumption. You ignite until you switch to DD. We're not well. We're, we're not really very ignitey, to be honest. We're not very ignite right now. Like it's nice that we have some chance to ignite, but we don't have any investment into ignite or ignite damage or anything. Not a very nice belt. Again, most gear we're just looking for life and resists. I just realized something. My filter doesn't show chance orbs. I'm not on my early filter. I'm on my end game filter that hides almost everything. That's funny. I was like, why am I not seeing fusings, jewelers? Like, there's zero percent chance I wouldn't have found them by now. That's funny. At least we explained them anyway. Exile filter. Yeah, I'm hiding like so many things. But we've explained them all anyway and bought them from the vendor. <sighs> Gotta teach new players how to recognize these mistakes too. True! True. There. Right. Onslaught Flask is nice, but we don't really have room for it right now. We're just gonna grab Cold and Lightning. Sounds good, but it wasn't a good ring anyway, so it's kind of whatever. Now, if you vendor... Oh, we're gonna keep that. If you vendor five rares, it'll get a new one. Ah, that's usable. We can keep that. We can keep that. In case we want to switch to shields. Marmo have a skill point for us? No. I will soon. She will soon. Um, right. Switch to that. Boom. Big upgrade. Still rest cap. Don't need to change anything. 
Then we need one more skill point until we can respec out of the alternate start. Like, you can't have zero skill points attached to your actual start. Right. Boom. Aura is back on. Make sure you keep turning that on. This zone also has another tip for finding the right direction. You see the corpses there? At the start and end of each, like, warehouse that you're going the correct way, you can see that there's a corpse showing you that you know where you're going. If there's a dead corpse there, you're in the right way. Little mini boss fight here, but obviously we have so much damage, nothing is really an issue anymore. So that's how you'll see people always know exactly where to go and won't enter any warehouse unless they see those corpses. Um, you're, at this point, you're only IDing things you can use. There's Realistically, you're never going to find an item that another player is going to buy at this point. For maybe more than a KL, so it's not worth your time. It's just about getting to maps as fast as possible. Dude, this feels so good. It's almost making me reconsider it. Like, oh man, there's a very- ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, okay, I hate everything. I hate my filter. There we have the chance orb! Turns a normal item into a magic or rare or unique item. Finally found one. In Act 8. There are only two more acts left to go. A lot of people do do brand recall automation to leveling setups, but it's not really that needed. It's not going to make a big difference. No, just one plus one wand. This one's better than a plus one wand, though. My plus one wand is pretty bad. Uh, Maramoa, give me my skill point. Did I grab the Clarissa skill point? No. Boom. Okay. We are going to make an attempt. We are going to make an attempt. So we can get rid of this stuff now. Um, we can take this. One more refund point that I don't think we need. Um... Um, all right, let's see if we can get EB soon. Aha! There! Cool. Very cool. Now, I don't know if I have enough energy shield for this to work, but let's try it anyway. So this is a little scientific. Detonate dead of chain reaction. Um, ideally I need red, red, green, blue. No, sorry. Green, blue, blue, red. Try recoloring this. Where's my crumbs? There. Oh, let's see. Um. We want shield church too at some point soon, and we do want a big desecrate. Um, this should work. This should work. How many crumbs have? Ugh. I need at least. Okay, you know what? We could actually do this. We could actually do this. We can be a little clever. Do I still have my skitter bots? So there's a neat trick that we can teach. So we can go back to Act 2 and buy a leveled hypothermia. So a really cool thing, and this is actually a really good tip for new players, is if you're using skitter bots on pretty much every build, hypothermia is a damage support gem. Oh wait, we have Lily. I don't know what I'm doing. Hello. And that's because it's like damaging his chilled enemies, but with Skitterbots, everything is chilled. Remember. So we can use that instead of fire penetration. Now, we aren't using Ignite anymore. We need Energy Leech. So we'll have some low level support gems. But that should be okay. That's Big Brain? Yeah. I have four monitors. Like some Merchmark setup. Um, let's see. We're going to do Intensify. We aren't really scaling too much right now, but that's okay. We're going to get up energy leaves. So we have low level support gems right now, and hopefully we should still have damage. We're going to have desecrate instead of cremation. And what we can do as a little bit of a backup is we can buy a red 
or sorry, blue green, and we can pop a cremation in here and armor band. So now we put the gems that we were using in our offhand. So I'm gonna keep leveling those in case this is like, oh, this really isn't working. Let's go back to Armageddon brand. Then I can switch back to it pretty easily. Is the idea there? Uh, detonate dead of chain reaction. Put always attack without moving on. Um, we're gonna use skitterbots. And let's just see how it feels. Now, there might be many issues. There might be a lot of issues. Um, I don't have skitterbots. Oh, I can use both. Oh, this seems fine. This seems fine. Oh, I forgot about this kid. Thank you. I forgot something. Uh, Lily can be invited to your hideout as well, which is very good. You can sell things to her. Uh, I'm missing faster casting too. I'll just keep these gems in my inventory. Um, and obviously these will get even faster with levels. Spell Cascade. And the Spell Cascade you want to keep at level 1. Because it makes them closer together. Like it makes the corpses spawn closer together. Uh, you do Arcanist Brand Desecrate for bossing, not for clearing. So obviously our damage is pretty crazy. Those are fractured items. Let's go explain those. We don't know how much these are going to drop. They have changed a lot of the drop rates on conversions, but um, this is a pretty interesting one. Also, this is less smooth than Armageddon Brand, but it will be a lot more damage. Because you'll be doing this on bosses. So you'll see some crazy boss damage now. So this is the new playstyle. So you're doing Desecrate, so similar to how you were playing with Cremation, but for everything. And obviously, um, a nice thing is you'll be using Shield Charge when we get a decent shield. And you will keep Flame Dash while you have Shield Charge. So your Shield Charge gets so fast by our attack speed bonus and stuff like that, they will be zooming, but Shield Charge can't go over a lot of things. So, what is a Fractured Item? So it's basically thing of that's not a save game. So if I use an alteration or an augment, it'll never modify that 75 mana. So let's say that we had an item with 90 life fractured, then I could use essences on it or chaos orbs and keep re-rolling that, hoping to make the other stats really good. So fractured items is really nice. Now obviously this is gonna get super strong uh, and we'll keep playing. So this is basically a regular, this is when we're normally gonna end. Play with me so we end them right after Solaris and Nanaris and we'll end this one here too. I think you just level Spell Cascade. Oh, yes. It's a bad habit. It's easy to do. You can go buy a new level 1 gem. Uh, there we have a Divine Mana Flask. Very easy to accidentally level the wrong gem when you have so many new ones leveling. Yeah, we only have Curl Lab done. Normally you switch way later. Obviously you can see it is super viable to switch this early. And we'll, we'll, we're about to find out the boss damage and see how that feels early. I do still recommend, uh, like, Armageddon Run feels so fucking nice. It's just so chill. So we recommend switching in uh, either early maps or yellow maps. I have very often stayed Armageddon Run to yellow maps, but then the damage will start falling off. But it feels very good. Now obviously, um, we don't need a mana flask anymore, so what we can do is that we can have a uh, onslaught flask instead. I'll show you that now in a sec. Ow. Brother. I'm getting stunned so much by this thing. There. Okay. So, let's just throw this on. Sure. Even better. So now we're getting rid of our mana flask. We don't need that at all anymore. So that's a huge upside to the Eldritch battery. And the more energy shield you get on gear, the better this will be. And you have basically infinite mana. And already now, with the 592 shield I have, you can see that my it's pretty infinite already. Uh, but if you had like 200 or something, it might be really slow at this point. So it's quite nice though. It is quite nice. Like with this much. Oh yeah, sorry. 382 I have. But with like 200 or something, it might be a little bit low. Divine Life Flask, that's the one we won. There is one Life Flask beyond this called Eternal Life Flask. However, this is worse. 
Um, it's better for healing over time and worse for instant. Now, the detonate dead of chain reaction is one or two levels under leveled, so we will normally have more damage from that too. Gem level is very important in Path of Exile. The skill we're using right now. Um, oh. ah, decent damage. So, the way the playstyle is now is I'm doing desecrate, right click, desecrate, right click, desecrate, and you can spam desecrate to make more corpses. So each cast destroys at least eight corpses. It's a pretty cool build. At this point, arming and information is definitely smoother, but I did want to try out that early change just so I would get to try and explain how it works. Uh, and oh wait, we don't need a mana flask at all right now. I'm silly. We do have that instant life flask. And we got chill immunity. That's the nicest thing early. That is the nicest thing early. Now we probably want to grab these. They give so much energy shield and life. Um, oh, great point. Something I definitely want to explain. This is super important. Right now we need to go and get a Spectre support gem. And this is actually going to make a big difference. For our damage. Uh, where's the chance orbs I had? Oh, did I use all my chance orbs? Didn't I find three? Did I buy things for them? You spent them as soon as they dropped? I guess I was hungry. That's devastating. Right, let's sell a bunch of rares that I'm no longer going to use. Yeah, fuck the shield. Let's just get all the ults I need. Goodbye, old gear. What is your motivation for streaming, Mr. Streamer? Oh, that's easy. Money. And fame. It's very appealing to me when I started. Uh, there. Okay, we've sold everything I can for ults now. Can I... Maybe? Aha! There, we got the chance orb. Perfect. Now let's buy a Spectre Gem. Most likely we'll do a Sunday Rest this thing. There! Alright, so now we have the Ray Spectre, then we're going to go back to Act 5. This is another reason you normally do it later. Um, you normally do this in Act 10. I think they might be easier to find there. We're about to find out. And also, this feels a lot better with shield charge. And that is because of this ascendancy. 2% attack and sp cast speed for each corpse recently consumed. Which, with this, you're consuming so many corpses all the time. So you'll feel super zoomy with shield charge. I obviously, early on, I'm still using double wand. That's not something we have. But, right now, we need to go find a Kitava's Herald. We can put Spectre on the bar. We're actually only temporarily using this gem. We're going to delete it afterwards. There are heralds here, right? Ah. You can tell us herald. It's at A is the default corpse skill to see it. Um, and then now, boom. Now, a really cool thing now. Um, and we can go to my hideout to check is now this is now in something called my corpse pool. So you do need to resurrect the Kitao's Herald because that's higher health than normal. Now even though I don't have the Kitao's Herald anymore, you can see that we are summoning them now and they have more health than normal monsters. So even though I don't have the Spectre Gem anymore and I can just delete it, we just gained like, this is, I don't even know if it's 40% damage, but it's a lot. So you don't need to have Spectres on this build, but you do need to have had Spectres at some point on this build. So each one, every time that corpse is summoned, it'll do a lot of damage. It's a very big deal for the build. Boink! And as you can see, our damage is pretty great. Only has TD ones because of the chain. Well, so each explosion can do eight corpses. Like it doesn't chain forever, I think. 
I haven't used it before. Until it runs out of corpses or has destroyed eight corpses. Yeah. And the level specter when it was summoned doesn't matter? No, not at all anymore. Our desecrate level matters. So if you had a low level desecrate, then our, then we're in trouble. Chain on DD looks pretty nice. It does, doesn't it? I definitely understand why every streamer is starting this. I'm gonna go do Linaris now. And normally this is a lot faster because we would have a shield when we switch. Yeah, you can actually later on get like more specters in the pool to further dilute it to even up the damage even more. That is part of why I was a little hesitant with this build. So I'm very curious on feedback for new players. Like, was it too complicated? Do they enjoy something like Explosive Hour a lot more? Or was it fine and it was good to have the most powerful build explained anyway? Because I assume that it'll be really useful to people that are so maybe not completely new. I don't know if there can be multiple chains going on at the same time. It's my first time playing it. Do Spectres stay if I log out? Yeah. You have them forever. So this area we just have to go through to get to the next boss. Um, I also didn't explain what Onslaught does. So it's that buff with the axe in the top left. Um, and what it does is it gives you 20% more, well, increased. 20% increased attack speed, cast speed, and um, movement speed. So it's really nice. It's very noticeable. Also, as far as damage, even though it's very high right now, do remember that we have very low level support gems. So we're going to get like another 20 to 30% more damage. More. So a large damage increase is coming our way, or if we had leveled up the gems early. But obviously, completely unnecessary. We are decimating everything. And the best place to get uh, the DDF chaining would be Mark Club. Another reason that we're doing it later. And you can still do it on a leveled up gem, like another any green leveled up gem. To get that transfigured gem. Here is our first map. Baby's first map. And here's our first six socket. So selling these is really great because they will give you seven jewelers per six socket. So that's not something you hoard. Um, but uh, throwing a few fusings on a usable one early so that you get at least a four link, but with six sockets for additional spots, that's really nice. And it never hurts to throw, you know, a few. Maybe you get an early five link. That does happen quite often to a lot of people. Six link is roughly uh, with 20 quality and the quality is important. Um, it's one in 1200 fusings for a six link. I came in late. How hard was it to get DDF Chain Reaction? So we did cheat for that because I didn't want the video to add an, an extra hour or two of me running lab. I think that's fair and smart. The AoE is also slightly larger than it normally would be because it has quality on it. But the damage is the same. Just play Trick Ward? Nah, it's going to be pretty pricey because so many people are going to want it. I would definitely recommend farming your own. And also, there will be other competitive things that you can probably get. I don't know. I don't honestly have any good examples of what else people are going to want transfigured. But um, there probably will be others that people are going to want that you can swap for the transfigured one. Because people are going to be swapping transfigured gems a lot early. So everyone just farms transfigured gems now at start. Uh, Merc Club for a lot of people, but Normal Lab for some people. Blank Hour Mirror will sell. True. Lansing Steel? Yeah, I don't know. Explosive drop of shrapnel. You're on the max roll team now? Yeah, I wanted to do written guides for a while, but didn't have a way to monetize it. And obviously, I don't have time to write the full written guide myself. Um, so hiring somebody to do that was like... when I, I did do that a few times for the Path of Excel forums, just so people could have written guides. But it just wasn't viable for me. I do like to experiment with things like that. Like, I also did try having all my videos translated. But that was like minus a few thousand a year and then I just didn't want to... It wasn't really worth it. Like, I had them translated to like Brazilian Portuguese. Chinese, Russian. 
something else. I don't know. With AI translating should get easier? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're coming up to the end of our run here. We can pick up that boot, conjure boots. We have an essence. We can just throw a random essence on it. Worst case scenario, it's just got an unwanted prefix or suffix, but you know, if everything else is good, you're pretty happy. We're gonna kill this little mini boss, then we're gonna kill Solaris and Nanars, and then we are gonna call it quits for today. I have to take a quick toilet break soon or I'm gonna die, but. After that, ah, you know what? I'll push through it. I'll pee after. We're so close to the end. All right. When did you switch to DD? Well, way too early, but like just now. Oh, I don't have fl flammability bound right now. I also still have flame wall, which we don't need to use. And go over my setup in a sec. Great damage though. Boom, we have fun ability now. Remember to pick up the quest item, see if you dropped any good loot. Um, we can throw out Flame Wall. We can have Arcane Surge on Flame Dash now, that's fine. And we are hit based now, so this spell damage is nice. We can sell everything here. Didn't get a good one, didn't get a good boot. Nothing is good. Here you can see that it sells for seven jewelers. Um, right now we have seven skitter belts, fun ability. Intensify, Hypothermia, Energy Leech, Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction, Spell Cascade, Foster Casting, Desecrate, Arcane Surge, Flame Dash, Determination, Wave of Conviction, and Herald Rush. That's all we have. Now, you do need the Skater Belts for the Hypothermia to work. No, you don't. No, we don't. We don't need that. So, that is a good tip for a lot of builds, but I just remembered I don't need that in this build. And the reason for that, so we could actually have another aura. It's funny. Very rare. Uh, we can have, actually have a different aura. So, I forgot, but the second Ascendancy node, um, enemies near corpses you spawn recently are chilled and shocked. So, Skidabout is actually a waste for us. Um, and that means we can throw in a haste, which I think I bought. Okay, we'll go buy one. Because that's very nice. I'll buy a haste. Now it will be a little level one, but that's fine. We'll put that here and boom. That'll give us movement speed and attack speed and cast speed. It'll feel really good. It'll feel absolutely amazing. Um, oh yeah, we just need to run back now. There. All right. Gonna make a new zone here so we can get XP on the way to the boss. Any drawback of swapping this early in your opinion? I mean, you might be low on energy shield. I personally think armor brand feels a lot nicer until it falls off. Like it just armor brand feels amazing. That's why brand skills they're a little bit scared of how they're balanced, right? Because Storm Brand and Armor Gen Brand, if they have comparative damage to the other skills, then we're only gonna play those skills. So they definitely are intentionally falling off a little bit in the end game. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it feels okay to swap now. I wish I had shield charge would be the biggest thing. I think I'm missing here. No. And then now I basically just want to do flammability and wave a conviction on the boss to debuff them. And you can see the damage while well, it speaks for itself. Just make sure there's enough corpses down. Um, it's also a bit of a pain to get the gem by now. That's a big downside. But yeah, nice damage. Nice damage. This is the SSF build, yeah. 
feel like the damage playing DD is so inconsistent. That's because of the corpses. So if you get a Kitava's Herald, you get a very large damage. Uh, like one of these. Like here you see multiple of them. Actually, here you see an insane amount. So this would probably have blown up the boss instantly, right? Because there's like seven of them. Uh, but when there's none, then you'll have a lot less damage. So either way, give me feedback on this episode in the description of the YouTube comments. Especially if you're a new player and playing for the first time. Because this video is in theory for you. But this might be a little bit too advanced. So let me know for the next time. And we do have other videos as well. Like Explosive Arrow and things like that. That are super easy for new players to understand. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is the most powerful starter this league. So um, hope it treats you well. Thank you so much for watching on YouTube. I'll be streaming lots on League Start. So if you want to watch, tune in and ask questions there. Anyway, so if you like the video. But more importantly, try to die. Less than I do.